Hello, everyone, and welcome to Break the Game Weekly, number 31. I'm your host, Dominic or Shadow Fear, whichever you prefer. Joined this week by ZK. How's it going, ZK? Pretty good, pretty good. Exciting 2v2 with more than two teams participating. This is amazing. I can't wait to get this started. We have five! <laughs> we know, haven't had right? tournament people in a tournament in some time for 2v2. For 1v1, we're that's fine, but for 2v2, it's like this is great. This mm. is this is awesome. We actually have I have a proper tournament. Yeah, let's go. Five teams. Yeah, yeah man. We're starting with uh, some of our, one of our favorite Five teams, teams, actually. Santa and, and Fleeky are both pretty, pretty good. Their opponents, though, are not to be underestimated. Totally not a war. Often coming up. Like, he's been improving week after week. And he's really showing his medal lately and uh, yeah, participating more. His partner, of course, is the core Jack, known more colloquially as Jack Attack, who's known for uh, being the UI lead of Immortal. So you know he knows what's going on. Yeah, UI lead does a lot of stuff on community as well, so they are definitely people who know the way around a lot of this game. Oh yeah, definitely. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what kooky strategy you're going up with. I know Santa and Flicky, uh, when creating this, when, when deciding on the map, called it a meme bargo. And that just tells me that uh, these guys have a plan in their mind and... Yeah! I do, do you want to me see... to go into my some, my guess on their plans, okay? Do I really hope to... it's not. I really hope it's not something unoriginal that we've seen a lot. But go for it. Go for it. You really hope it's. I mean, I don't think we've seen a lot of Mass Icor. I have oh, a yeah. feeling Mass Icor might is on the table. We they were practicing a little bit of that yesterday, so I That's could true. see it. I could see it. Yeah, yeah. Mass Icor instead of the usual Mass Icor. You know, Mass Icor really works I'm down well. With that. Yep. Yeah. No. I I Icors are an, are a fun unit. They're they're great. They can run around. They can run they can around run. like crazy. Yeah. Run around, vomit, every vomit acid everywhere. A little They're bit fun. of fire acid. Burn their enemies to the ground. Just a little bit, you know, for spice. Exactly. And that's, uh, for that's flavor. what we're hoping to see from them. Of course, uh, on the other side of the bracket, we have Hydraulics making his big return, playing with Magical this time around. And yeah, Magical with Hydraulics should be, honestly, that those are the true favorites. Magical or 1v1 champion in general. He's won so many tournaments until he... Took a small break and has participated in the tournament in a little bit, but Magico is the foe to be de defeated for out. And his partner, Hydraulics, who doesn't participate all that often, but when he does, always places very high. I'm surprised that they don't, because Hydraulics loves 2v2. Oh, yeah. Hydraulics I... is here for 2v2. Yeah, I, I think Hydraulics is just a timing issue where he has a job that interferes a bit with it. Uh, when he can get the time off, he loves coming on, but... Unfortunately, it doesn't happen all that often. When he does, it's a treat, and we're happy to have him with us. And yeah, that's hydraulics. really, I'm really exciting because I've like I haven't seen hydraulics in forever. Though hydraulics is going, they are part of the first seed with magical, so they are waiting on the winners' quarterfinals to complete before they get going. Once they get going, though, it is going to be a pretty interesting match. We might be able to catch that depending on the timing, and if we do, that'd be cool. Yeah. We're going to be changing up our actual players, though. The Switching to the other side of the winner semifinals, as YJ Zhao and Pigeon Wretch have won their match. They're up against Magical and Hydraulics, and it's going to be starting off on Embargo. Exactly. Embargo. Still our beautiful little Embargo going around, and we'll see what our players plan to do and what factions they have. We have Magical... As Zol and Hydraulics as Orzum, so good old mix. This side we have Zol and Mala in equal measures, and it seems like uh, White Zhao and Pigeon Rich are going for the double E for immediately. That usually indicates some heavy type of pressure or either some very special tech play. I expect some pressure. I expect some Zakals to come out and try to pressure their opponents. I agree. What? I mean, what to expect from Magical though? Because they are not going for tech. They are going. What are they building? Going early expansion from the looks of it, but it's... Okay, Expand early first. expansion. A little bit later than normal. I'm kind of wondering, are they going quick expansion into production? Hydraulics, on the other hand, is being very much early production. Just send them to quickly, make sure that everything's okay. And they don't see... They didn't see the ether. They didn't see expansions either. Probably clue yeah. in. Yeah, Magico's, but, Magico knows the knows the timings, right? If he's okay, no yeah. expansion on either one. Okay, I know both players just went double E for going for Mazda calls. 
Magical knows exactly what's up. Now it's up to him for, to figure out how to defend this. I do like this from Hydraulics. He <laughs> has the reinforcements for the Zentari coming as early as possible to help defend this. And it's going to start damaging the tower before it can actually hit back. Which, pretty interesting. <laughs> okay, that's we don't really see that clever. That often. I yeah. have never seen that in on stream. Yeah, and it's actually... It could actually work out as their opponents are going for early Zakals, as we see, uh, going for a neural site. And when you go early Zakals, you don't have the first units out. So these units are just attacking the tower, and nothing's there to defend it. And hydraulics, okay. able to micro out. There, this is this is going great. Er, amazingly start for magical and hydraulics here, able to get center map control. And of course, this Orism, they makes it that much easier to get rid of the tower. That just so the biggest aspect here is one, they lose map control. Two, they they lose their first place where they can actually heal their units. Their, their place to heal the units on the map is gone. Uh, so they have to head back home or go to one of the side towers to heal up, which is a bit of a they're problem out of the way. No, they're, yeah, they're exactly. so out of the way. Like, if you go to the side towers, your base is wide open. Exactly. So, uh, but the calls are coming out. The calls will try and rush for the middle. On the other side, the Magical and Hydraulics need to be careful not to head for the tower too early as uh, the calls are out. <laughs> yeah, why does that and wrench both with Massacall pushing out, nothing to defend directly. Magical Hydraulics, a lot of position, trying to take out Wajizau's second tower. But Hydraulics and Magical are able to pull back in a little bit. Wajizau with the high ground. Pigeon Wrench following. Threatening Hydraulics is natural as Magical comes around to surround. Hydraulics looking to cut off reinforcements. Able to slow down the reinforcements, giving Magical a bit more room. Magical regroups, starts pushing back Watches those forces while Hydraulics comes in from behind. But both players somewhat split up. Watches on Pitch and maintaining cohesion. Able to hold off. They can take out Hydraulics' force. This is wide open. Reinforcement is able to come through. Hydraulics forced to get away to heal up. Now Magical on their own to defend. And to be sure, oh man, getting the reinforcements though. Hydraulics making sure that Magical just has to take care of the units that are already there, but the units already yeah. there are a massive force he has to deal with. And using Empire Broken, keeping everything alive as long as possible as he keeps that, pushing forward. Why that natural is huge. Is it going to go down? One more shot, takes it out! Magical and Hydraulics losing their first, their, their front natural. Watch this on Pigeon Wrench. However, taking heavy losses on their escape. Yeah, that's it's it's good. They needed to take the base down, but they need to keep some of their units alive. The reinforce are still being made, and of course, Hydraulics doesn't have his natural. Magical still does, and really, the plan here was for Hydraulics to go for early units while Magical was stacking up to a lot of Bone Stalkers so far, and we'll see what his next plan is. But he's just massing Bone Stalkers for now. And taking if you're out mass the Bone Stalkers. That's not a bad choice this early in the game, and they have a very strong power spike early on. Gets rid of the tower. Gets basically total tower control for Team Ice. Magical and Hydraulics are the only players here with any kind of frontline towers. Yeah, no, losing that all that map control, and really the whole point of this Zakabia is to get full map control in exchange for no economy. And behind this, they did get their bases, getting it a bit slower for YJZL. But that's how they need to get back in the game, while Ma Magical is really the one that's ahead right now economically, getting his early base. And being able to survive, right? They didn't lose the game outright from no, the Sakal push, which could happen. No. They absolutely, the fact that the Sakal were wiped out basically to, to a call saved Magical Hydraulics. Isn't the natural expansion would have been far more devastating if it if they didn't exact that heavy price from their opponent. And what I'm looking forward to is, is, is seeing the transformation from here, right? We're seeing a lot of mass call. And then there's other stuff you could do. You can go to Icors, you can Especially with all these light units. Oh yeah. Okay, that's a great target here. Getting that town hall. Oh, they barely miss it. We chose defended. Watch that pitcher able to regroup, dropping red harvest. No team ice doesn't want to engage. Actually dropping all pyre abilities. Pulling team ice back into their tower. Empire and Broken setting up that splash damage off the tower. Why does some pigeon wrench have to be careful here? Magical dropping Zol as well, just for that extra crowd control flavor. And that retreats Pigeon Zhao. Pigeon Zhao, or Pigeon Zoo rather, unable to hold. You push back to the main base while Magical Hydraulics, they're actually have a reasonably strong army to push through in this. Yeah, exactly. Having the frontliners able to take all those hits and still getting 
powerful shots at the same time the backline of all those those uh, those hunters bone stalkers jumping on top of everything dishing out the pain and YJ is out smartly cancels his front base still that puts them at an economic disadvantage compared to magical and hydraulics and this time magical and hydraulics did not lose their force in the process that's starting much to look, more economical yeah it's starting to look a little bit grim for uh for pigeon zoo as they're trying to break out of their base, but all the units are coming oh. in for the other side. Ian, that's ambush circle. You got the hunting ground set up too. Everything's coming up, Team Ice, right now. Yeah. Oh, Absolver to really take control. Having the tower set up, they're establishing complete terror control outside their opponent's natural. Oh, in their opponent's natural, really. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, Pigeon Zoo is trying to get a tactical position, trying to get a good surround, good concave. They just cannot manage. Every time they try, Magical and Hydraulic reposition, putting them in range of the Absolver, or just getting them in an awkward position overall. However, the Absolver is now doomed. Why does Pigeons out? Getting around the right way. Able to stop the tower as well. Take back their natural expansion. Took a bit of maneuvering, but Team Fire able to push forward. Now back to the front tower. Hydraulics forced to reinforce a little bit further, and that's... That's been a bit of a thing. Hydraulics, unfortunately, did lose quite a bit more early on, having supplied the frontliners. They're they're in a bit of a tough position when it comes to army size and army value. Well, to be sure, he has magical and he, he has the big damage dealers and those absolvers. True. As long as, he has, as long as he has support so he can't get sniped, he'll be doing decently in the fights. He'll be a nice support. Behind this, as you said, not having the natural as early makes it a bit harder. But he's going double Angelarium. Wow. He's uh, okay. taking up something special. Yeah, just keep an eye on that. While well, Magical switching off into Thrums, going for a little bit of harassment. Just provide that a little extra <laughs> damage. Same time, though, Pigeon Rush already taking up the Dread Sisters. Yep. Uh, it's the right move, right? They're one of those units that can really shift the game, shift the, shift one of those fights. You need a few of those to take back the, take back the victory. You do, but even one with a well-placed root can hold things around. Unfortunately, it was not... And mm. getting caught out of position, Magical and Hydraulics punishing Pigeon Zoo. Getting them back in the natural, and Pigeon Zoo focused heavily on tech, did not quite get the army they to hold this, and now Pigeon Wrench, in particular, struggling, having lost to the Thrums, and now trying to hold the line. Unable to hold, Pigeon Zoo throws in the towel. Game one goes to Magical and Hydraulics. Oof. Yeah, so Magical is showing us you can actually defend everything with only Bone Stalkers. Do not try it at home. You will possibly die from it if you try it too often. It's it's not as easy as it looks as Magical. It's, it's not. It it's, it's <laughs> like Massacall does not do especially well against Mass Bone Stalkers. So yeah. if your opponent's going Massacall, Mass Bone Stalkers, not the worst move. I mean, it's 2v2 means that you also have your opponent, or your teammate rather, helping out, which right. was invaluable. Hydraulics coming in with the, with the support. Front lines and Tari made a, made all the difference in the world. Yeah, and stopping all of those uh, reinforcements as well in that early fight. And stopping reinforcements and then actually getting the false round, killing the whole army. I mean, to be fair, I wouldn't hate if uh, Pigeon Zoo starts, tried to make the same strategy. They just have to adapt a bit better and not uh, lose their whole army. If, in general, it's a good tip for any uh, serious gamer. Don't lose your whole army. That's going to help a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious to see how Pigeon Zoo... How Pigeon Zoo as a team reacts to this because we're on Lost Province now, and Lost Province is a little bit more flexible for movement. Embargo has much more of a clear rush path. Lost Province tends to get armies more split up, tends to have more multi prong fights. It's the kind of place where having a handful of strong, tough units might actually work out better. Like, we'll see what we'll see what happens. As you said, one of the things in embargo is you have only one entrance to the main, and it's defended by two towers. So even if you get your, even if you get all your units in, it's pretty hard to kill those towers, and the towers will will take a lot of damage. You want to send on your opponent's units. Just doing that can make a big difference. In any case, uh, magical and hydraulics actually switching up. Hydraulics switching up to his Ajari, while magical, mm -hmm. he was yeah he was switching up to Malo as well. So both of them switching up to the other immortal, the same faction though. Yeah, the. The idea being still clearly to have, you know, Mala coming in with more of, or well, Magical coming in with more of the backline damage, while Hydraulics is able to 
provide the screening. Especially in case we get another double to call push. Yeah, exactly. The, any type of push. Of course, now Magical was able to get it and sees it immediately. Okay, there's not double Efer. He's going to feel much yeah, safer. Early expansion. I mean, it's Lost Province. It's very easy to early expand in Lost Province. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, for both of them, yeah. Both of them have yeah. one place to defend with a lot of choke points right in front of the natural. So, either, even if they attack from both sides, it's pretty easy, easier to defend from both sides as it's not a huge, huge open area in front. Which means I don't expect we're going to be seeing as aggressive... Like, we're not going to see as aggressive an opening. We might still see heavy Zakal usage. Though, that's... That really comes down to whether or not they decide to actually pull, push that tech. Like, mm -hmm. it's... There's a lot of other things that can be done, and while Master Call is very popular at the moment, it is not the only thing Aru can do. Especially when you have two players, right? You, you can you can get a lot of different compositions, a lot of different units. If you see your opponent's not going Master Call himself, you can say, okay, he's not going Master Call, I can do anything else. Of course, Wedgezu still getting still getting his early uh, neuroscythe. He's going to get a few Zakals. calls. They're good early game protection. They, they're good frontliners. They're good to defending they any type of early push. They're also very good at pushing, but that has already been dealt with. So, I mean, that will be... that. That's... that. The devs are well aware of it. The The patches will be fixed. will be adjusting that. It's... But even as it is now, players have definitely learned to... Learn to work around it a bit, kind of seeing where the calls are maybe not as strong at dealing with entrenched positions, or maybe not as strong if they're slowed down or have to run around stuff, at, or just unable to move at all. If you can avoid them, then what are they going to do? Or split them up, what are they going to do? I mean, hope not to die is generally the advice. And I'm yeah, that's, true. that's true. I'm looking at hydraulics right now, no, still no Efer. That's really curious. He's going to get uh, a lot, a lot of mining going on. Where is he spending all his... Uh... Good question, actually. I don't... Oh, the bar at the bottom I... is not working out. I guess not. Oh, well. Hmm. Weird. Okay. Well, anyhow. I yeah, no, exactly. Sometimes. Yeah, exactly. We have to figure out what the players are heading for, what type of army they want to... Something... Double check. Yeah, what type of army do you Oh, they already crashed. Was it a... <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for the lobby. I'm just like, huh, where is it? Oh, no, they started a thread. Okay, it's actually probably not a bad idea, but... All right. Okay, well, sometimes it happens. <laughs> it happens, indeed. Okay, so we are back in with... Well, our at least podcast. we have had one game. We're back in with our podcast, have... <laughs> Another part of magical yep. system discussion. Uh, but no, man, we, we can go back to our game. We can talk a bit about the first one, which was, you know, pretty interesting in how the players adapt to different strategies. We saw Hydraulics not heading for any E for it also. It, it can mean that you you can go for some peculiar strategies, maybe going for a lot of early units and try to go in. The opponents don't go for I cores, they are very strong at killing stuff. Looks like we might be able to play the game again. All right. Get in this. Yes, we can. Okay. Game is back up. People are playing. Let's go. Oh, yeah. That's how we like it. And let's see if Hydraulics this time will. I mean, he, he can just go for the same build, right? There was nothing hard countering each other. Everyone was, seemed pretty comfortable with what they were heading for. Exactly. Why is that still going for... Oh, expand first, even before Aether. Oh, okay. I mean, Lost Province being like that, sure. Still huh. a bit of a shift. Yep, and on the opponent side, both of them also going for double expansion. So magical, also not going for Efer before. Ooh. they were going heavy on the Bone Stalker and Mass Hunter in the previous, in the first attempt of this game. Yeah. <laughs> no, the very well. I, I do enjoy that fast. Oh no, okay. Magical is going for the most economical build possible, as greedy as he can be. That's magical way. How he wants the magic systems to work today is maximum greed. Double E for after expansion. Oh, did they go triple ether? Oh no, they haven't got triple ether. It's not quite as maximal. I mean, they wouldn't go for quite yet. That the uh, yeah, exactly. Now isn't they go for it when it's like halfway when you're ha about halfway done on the thing, so it's done at the same time. Yeah, give or take. So not going for the most 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 greedy, but you know, 
<laughs> at some yeah. point you got you gotta give some take some give give some take I'm not sure how, how our oppression goes anymore well left this one yeah Same i don't thing. know i've completely lost everything in my head i like the moats going for the for the towers it's something we've seen a bit sometimes but not all that long it's it was really popular when you could smack them and they would start shooting at buildings but they don't attack if they haven't been attacked for six seconds so it doesn't work very much anymore so people stop doing it yeah uh, all those all those little cheesy strategies getting stopped by that hmm. i don't think it's a bad to... idea to have the towers not fire after six seconds and not being yeah. shot at no it's fun <laughs> like, yeah. it isn't why you're just it walking was, around it was, like, one I'm of getting those things shot at. where if anyone watched the parasite chat with zard they, i like the way he phrased it. it i remember it fondly and i don't miss it yeah <laughs> Wait, are we talking about Zard right now or what? What? Oh no, it was a thing. It was a comment he made about some of the really early ways that the game was busted. Oh yeah, that he remembers it fondly but doesn't miss it. I think it's a really good way of putting it. Yeah. No, we we like having seen it. We like having been there and saying, like, oh yeah, yeah, but we're glad that there. it's been fixed. Exactly. Oh. Well, ma double. Okay, Pyre kind of going both ways here, but why is on pitch much ultimately ahead? Mostly thanks to forcing out the deliver from evil. It was not what I expected to see there, but, you know, uh, whatever he wants to go for, he can go for it. <laughs> From here, though, watch this now, Petronich have full reign of the map. Like, they, they can just take everything. You know, and actually, this is great for them, too, because watch that. We already see how much Wajazel loves just throwing out Zol everywhere. Magical going for a lot more Zakals themselves. Yeah, he's the Zikals one going for Zakals, Zikals this time. He's the one good for Zakals. Interesting. Okay. So frontliners were frontliners. That's the way to go now. Actually, I'm really curious what's going to happen because I don't think Team Fire is aware of this yet. They are obviously now. They've seen this call, but yeah, like, they're oh. totally out of position. Why Zhao looking to come back? Pitcherich able to get a bit of a better position, start to intercept hydraulics, but Why Zhao going for a backline run to get out of there? Well, I, I, I actually love that from him. Like he's keeping his opponent at bay, which gives them more time to get some units out. That's what's going to come down to. Need. Yeah, they need more units. So if they can, anything they can do to keep their opponents away from their base, it's great. But that's not what Magico is going for right now. He's just massing up his calls and getting to pyro camps up and running, and getting actual pyro for themselves. Because so far, Team Fire has been getting ahead on the map control, and they're actually still managing that pigeon wrench having. Fallen back quite effectively. Magical not focusing on pushing means that Pigeon Zoo will maintain map control. Though it's worth noting they're maintaining map control potentially at the cost of tech. They're getting red veiled. No, it's not the cost of tech. They're actually doing. They're being quite clever about this. Going to go straight into Red Seer Dread Sister combo. Well, like their red veil tech, which could be Red Seer Dread Sister, might be Bloodbound, but Red Seer or Dread Sister just is common offering. or just offering. offering. But either way, they're set up. Coming here with the Red Harvest. Pigeon Wrench Magic. Well, Pigeon Wrench Widget's out. Coming around Magical. Hydraulic's coming in to try to help out. So far, Matt. Uh, Pigeon Zoo has done a tremendous amount of damage coming in. Widget's out's reinforcements come through. Astro Magic. Magical Shield. Or Hydraulic's Shields, rather, off of the Heaven's Aegis is enough to push back Pigeon Zoo, but not enough to prevent them from getting that pyre as they do. And they'll escape with most of their army. And those Absolvers came in just a second too late. If they had been there from the start of the fight, that would have been a no-brainer for, for Team Ice. But no, here we go. Pigeon Zoo take a nice little army lead from there. Of course, there's so many Zakals now for Magical. He just kept making them and Jeez. making them. That's a and scary Zakal army. It. Oh, Zakals that is with Absolvers. Scary Z that is a terrifying army when oh, you're yeah. dealing with pure tech one units. Like, yeah. why does that Pigeon Wrench have to buy so much time to get their higher tech units? Able to get one of the Absolvers out thanks to Why Does Bone Stalkers, but now they're trapped! Magical Hydraulics able to cut off Why Does Out, taking on most of their army. Pigeon Wrench coming around the back with Ronza Call. Gotta watch out for the Red Harvest. Don't want to give Magical too much blood. Pigeon Wrench okay. responding in kind. Chum coming, trying to come around, but Hydraulics deploying the Absolvers, locking down the turret. Why Does Out dropping Zul. Taking what damage they can, but those Absolvers are not going to let them go too far. Pigeon Wrench going for it, though. Zakal is able to do enough damage to the Absolvers, start taking them out one at a time, but losing so well, many of their numbers in the process. The they have Zol the back, but it's just not enough. All the, all of this Zakal go down. Only one or two Absolvers were taken out before their splash damage just caught up to Pigeon Wrench. Now, why is now coming? 
Oh, get the last. Yeah, that's good. One Zakal from an Absolver, great trade for him. Then he can head back and hopefully get a few more units. He, they need to get our units up and running. But at this point, Magical and Hydrox don't even need to keep pushing. Magical behind us, got his own third base. And oh, setting up the two Absolvers. Okay, Ooh. just a little alone. A little alone. Not too alone, though. Deliver from Evil coming out there. Hydraulic's able to save one of them. The other one does get taken out. But at the cost of several workers. Same time, Pigeon Wrench desperately holding the choke point. Why is that coming around the back to help out? But Hydraulics and Magical just gradually, gradually losing units. Again, the attrition works out for Pigeon Zoo. Can they take out that Absolver? It's chasing it down. Zapari able to hold it out. Hydraulics holding the retreat. Pigeon Wrench only giving chase to center. Not up the Hydraulics hill. Hydraulics hold up the, the line. Hill. Do not go uphill against Absolvers there. Oof. Oof. Okay, only lost a few units, but oh, the hill is coming down on them now. The boulders are coming down. The avalanche of Zobber is jumping on top of them. And there is the hunting grounds. Paying off the Zobber's coming up, but it's just too much firepower from Hydraulics. Forcing Pigeon Wrench and Whites out off the hill. Now they got to regroup, got to rebuild. And that tech is just... Hasn't had a chance to really pay off. Magical Hydraulics, their timing on that push was perfect. Yes. They've really been good at hitting those timings, right? Just getting the Absolvers out. Just getting a mass Absolvers. How do you deal with these? You need some type of Dislodger. Or um, Air. <laughs> yeah, Air Dislodgers, that's true. And Nidor Actually, Air would really, be really, really good against right this army. There's yeah. not a whole lot they can shoot up. But mass, yeah, maybe... mass low-tech units is exactly what Absolvers are designed to kill. Yeah, the zone controls is about controlling zones against those small type units. And they're doing their best. They have a great arc, though. Oh, that's a perfect arc against the choke point, but the absolvers are just too much. Hydraulics able to power through with brute force. Magical, same same thing for them. And which Pedro White is out. Able to get decent positions, but not do not have the units to pay, make that pay off. Uh, the minigun from those Absolvers is going ham on absolutely everything that comes into its range. And with almost nothing willing to go close to it, that base is forfeit. They're they're just trying to keep it at bay, but Hydraulics is not done pushing. No, not, not in the least. Hydraulics Hydraulics holding the line here. Getting surrounded by the by the calls coming from Watch This Out. But surrounding multiple sides. Good, very amazing split by Pigeon Zoo. Making sure that no more than a couple Absolvers hit any unit at a time. Cleans up Hydraulics' entire Absolver army. Is at the cost of a base. Now I've got to watch out for Hydraulics, or for Magical. Magical is starting to get around the side. Throw some thrums around. Has some raiding parties. Expanding, or looking to expand or take out expansions everywhere. Pigeon Wrench got on the rebuild, but Hydraulics on the warpath. Yeah, they, they killed six Absolvers, but there's seven now still on the field. So they're yeah, coming exactly. for the next part. <laughs> and they're already deployed. They're walking right into the deployed absolvers, losing oh, half man. the, using a quarter of the Zakal off, off the back of just a misstep. Now those absolvers once again presenting a problem. Yeah, absolvers are really just jumping forward onto them, and yeah, uh, magical hydrox on the warpath coming in. There's nice surround prepared for YJ Zal, uh, but the numbers might just not be enough. No. They'll do their best. They're coming on top, but no, not uh, quite yet. It's worth knowing why Jizo had expanded to the 3 o'clock, but it's been taken out by Magical. There's Bloodbound off to the side. And that's going to make it that much harder for Pigeon Zoo to set up whatever they want to set up. Like, even just these basic units are going to be quite taxing on their bank account. Yeah, and their bank account is just not that great. Their bases are, are off and they're not much running yet. There's, he's trying to get one last uh, little bit of Red Harvest, get some Ketos to help alleviate uh, the pain but it it's not work. enough no absolvers hit what's nearby they if they have more units it doesn't reduce it that much when they're deployed well that's so be a 2 0 yeah that's that good job magical and hydraulics taking taking the series very effectively yeah something's going up with the tournament we might be changing it out a bit seeing who's gonna who we're gonna see in the grand final of the winners finals uh, might have changed or, that a bit with some things. Yeah, I think. Let's we'll see what's up. Uh, um, I'm gonna. Th I think we should. Probably... But yeah, the last game was a bit of a bulldozer coming in from. Uh, it really Hyperlux. was. Yeah. Just never stopping the absolver pressure. That was really his sole strategy: just make infinite absolver. 
And that's about it. Just make more absolvers and more absolvers and have fun with that. Seeing how the other team could react with decent micro and macro, he was able to just keep pushing until Pigeon and uh, oh, I just out just couldn't eke out a win there. And as we mentioned, some of the wing ways they could have gone out with it, getting, going for air, Frums do mm -hmm. can't get shot at. They don't kill the stuff extremely fast, but they can't get shot at, so it doesn't matter how slow they kill stuff. And the other and side... That's... Uh, yeah. yeah, it was. It came like ultimately the only win that was there for Pigeon Jew is when they managed to pull apart the absolvers and hit them two or three at a time. Yeah, but seven out in one group now. You, yeah, like it's, you, it's... you need to have tech. You need to have, even if they had managed to get like Dread Sisters, which were kind of the obvious choice. It would, or even heck, Bloodbound for the matter, teleporting in, dealing the damage before they get killed, would be at least or, something. Or actually, even Resonance at some point, Resonance would have been able to at least keep them at bay. Right, you deploy them. Yeah. We know that we talk about. Them not being the strongest unit right now, but there's still there's still the, some softest logic you can keep it based, keep them from jumping on you as much. Uh, they'll still try to jump, but with enough frontliners, you're able to get through. Mm -hmm. there, there's a few ways they can try to get around it. We are into the winners' finals. Okay, we are here, and that's what we want. We just want to be here all together. On is it meme embargo? It is actually fool's, fool's bay meme. Oh. Memers Bay? I don't know. Yeah, Memers Bay. We're down on Memers Bay here. We're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see what Santa and Flicky have up and running. So far, expansion oh. first, and we won't have the full uh, the full craziness going on so far. And it'll be scouted. It's not full crazy. So that's going to be nice for everyone. We even have hydraulics. Able to scout that Santa's expanding. It's like, oh, good. They're not going full memery today. They're not, no. not worth rushing us. That's fun. Not that memery, oh. anyway. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be a different one. Or maybe he's saving it for later. We never know. With uh... They often do. It's often like Grand Finals last game kind of thing that we start getting to the real memes. Yeah. For now, they'll save it up. and <laughs> They'll save it up and just try to have the best games possible, play to their best on... Or maybe they just have a strategy that's really safe for Embargo. We don't know. On the other side, Hydraulics Magical. Just want to play pretty straightforward, play pretty well. Yeah, I'm just happy to be here. Yeah, Hydraulics <laughs> playing his third Immortal in three matches, as Hydraulics does, never plays the same one twice. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, he always does that. <laughs> so I have no but idea who their main is. I don't know if they have a main. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen when we get into Jorah. They're just going to keep doing this? Are they going to eventually Probably. just decide there's like three or four Immortals they like? I think that's just Hydraulics' style. I was like, you know what? I just like yeah. this game. I'm going to play something different every single time. Who needs to get good perfectly? It's like, okay. Yeah, it's like, is there a random select? That's my main. <laughs> yep. And the way I see it is that, you know, Magical, well, Hydraulics was pretty much the same level as him in StarCraft 2, so it's like, okay, they have the right mechanics, so from there, oh. a lot of stuff is just oh, goes no. through. Oh, no. Not again. Oopsie. Oopsies for today's. Okay, so it sounds like Flicky at least has, it sounds like Flicky is unfortunately the culprit, but it sounds like Flicky has an idea of what's going on technically. No, oh, that's always so good. So they may be able to fix it. Yeah, which is unfortunate because it idea. sounds like it's their microphone, which is yeah. a bizarre thing to cause errors, but that's not unexpected. Like, you know, when, bizarre when things happens, cause errors. When that happens, you just have to use telepathy instead to communicate with your partner. Yep. That's, that's just what you got to do. And if that's what they'll have to do, they'll figure it out. I believe I'm in really the, the what their mic is, like what they're using for a microphone. Well, it's going to be the drivers, right? Something with the drivers are just wording it out with the software it's it's a really weird one yeah maybe there's a lot of microphones will just plug into the windows sound system and whatever drivers you have usually installed through your graphics card rather mm -hmm. than having to install their own so that's why i'm really curious because if they did that i mean that could very well be the problem and yeah yeah that that could be a real pain yeah especially it's his new mics it's like oh god he just bought it and was hoping it would work but it doesn't and well, here we are. Yeah. Strange, strange technical issues there, but so it goes. Anyway, we can get in the game. Hopefully that with that fixed, we don't have to worry about crashes going forward. No, yeah, exactly. I don't know if that was the cause, the root cause is we saw not of where also crash a decent amount earlier, but it was mostly Flicky's microphone, apparently. Yeah, I mean maybe they also have Flicky's microphone. Ooh, maybe. Maybe, maybe that's the also... problem. That's what makes it bugged, is that it's in two places at once. Oh, that's possible, I suppose. Yeah. It's like, how do you deal you gotta with that? Oh. You gotta open up SteamSpeak. That's what you gotta do at that point. Just open up TeamSpeak, stop using Discord, and that'll okay. solve all your problems. Go back to Mumble, Skype. 
Van Actually, Van Mumble was legitimately good. It is. So was Van. Teamspeak had but... issues, but Mumble was, was legitimately good. Okay, yeah, Teamspeak and Van probably had the same issues mostly. Um. Yeah, there's a reason Discord supplanted Teamspeak. Yeah, and Skype, but that was more because Skype stopped really being maintained. It became Teams. Well. Like it wouldn't become Teams, but it got replaced by Teams, and Teams is not. As like Teams is very specifically for like workplace management stuff. Yeah, in a way that work. Teamspeak isn't. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, well, I mean, the thing with Teamspeak, well, yeah. all of that is that Microsoft suite, so you can just everything's interconnected without needing, well, much because it's all interconnected. Yeah. Although, thank business. you for reminding me that Teamspeak and Ventrilo existed because that explains some weird dreams I've been having a while back. With Vent. And TeamSpeak. Yeah. How? Yeah, it was weird dreams. It's like, why am I hearing random... Like, why am I... Like, I'm on the computer, and it's like, I'm hearing random voices, and I'm seeing this window in the corner with a bunch of usernames, and I'm not quite sure what's going on. It's like, oh! Those are memories of, of using Ventri of TeamSpeak or Mumble or stuff like that. Mm, okay, that's what, that's what that was. Thank you for actually dispelling that from my head, because it was bugging me. It's been bugging me for months. Where the yeah. heck that was coming from? Yeah, the good old days where you had to use uh, M uh, IRC for chatting, and then you had to use a the voice device to talk, and it's like, oh. And then Discord just yeah. could all... Oh, Skype also technically did it, but... Yeah, but Skype oh, didn't do any near as good a job. Like, Discord... Skype kind of put chatting and voice together. Discord put IRC and voice together. Like, all, oh, the, yeah, all the crazy stuff of IRC, Discord has it. Yeah, should the community feel. Yeah. The big community feel is the big thing that we have now with Discord. Getting it... Getting the community together and yeah, the IRC craziness basically of all of, of all. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Except it's more centralized, but other than that. Yeah. And also they save the logs automatically instead of you having to have your own. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. It. Oh, Seema's pointing out that they're less they're less delayed than Discord, which is fair. So yeah, for any I mean, if you're gonna do group karaoke, I think jam kazam is probably your only option. Or something to that effect. Exactly, you just gotta find the right karaoke device for every space. <laughs> that that's that's like a very, very specific niche need. Which I appreciate. Yeah. I appreciate it, well, but I'm like well, I bring up jam kazam because it is actually specifically designed for people who are trying to do music practice remotely. Yeah, there you go. And apparently it's a bit of a pain to set up and very finicky, but when it works, it works well. Mm. I, guess, I guess you kind of need that for karaoke. You really do need to be in sync or else it's going to be something yeah. on all sides. Yeah, so this big, big crowd songs. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, it's a crowd song, not a round. <laughs> uh, anyway. As for the game itself, it does appear that Flicky has been able to manage for three and a half minutes, so it's looking promising. It's all the microphone. It's all about that voice chat. All got to yeah. keep that voice chat down. I'm, I was kind of hoping we'd see more Santa and Flicky just showing themselves on the map, all those pinging and stuff. Yeah, we, we have the pings in to help each other. Oh, what was I talking about? There we go. There's the very first ping. Saying, I want to attack this. <laughs> While the other side gets attacked. And Santa's... Listening to his partner. Of, is it they're listening, but I'm just thinking because they're not building as much. Flicky's much more, has gone much more aggressive, gone much more mil like, military focused. Santa Claus looks like they're building up to something. Same time, Magical. Oh, wow. Magical's just gone full on. They're going full on well, Bone Stalkers? Well, he's losing his front tower, which is pretty decent. And Hydrox's not really in position if he wants to jump on the base. But you know what? Santa and Flicky are pretty happy of just killing that. It's not. You don't need much more than that. I don't know. They seem to want much more than that. No, they're, they're gonna try. They're gonna try. They're going for it. After us. Well, coming in here, magical coming, getting saved by hydraulics coming in with the offering. That's the time. Flicky. Yeah, they got an ether extractor, but not much else. Kept everything alive though. Exactly. Free damage against losing nothing. You gotta commend them on that. Not sticking around too long, which is really the mistake that most people do. Right? It's like, oh, I'm winning. I'm gonna. Shoot, I just lost everything. Damn it. Yeah. yeah. But of course, all these four players are very much experienced players and understands, uh, understand pretty well how to uh, 
gain victory and not taking the bad engagement. So we'll rarely see bad engagements from these players. Oh, straight up bad. Usually it's going to be at least a trade. It's looking... It's looking tight for Santa Claus. They can get out of there. They can get out of there. But San Hydraulics and Magical were coming in. Hydraulics is still looking for a fight to take. Both of them, it really. Just... Both. Wow, they are so focused on military right now. Yeah, they're all about going out. Yeah, they're just looking for the fight, trying to surround their opponents. Uh, but Flicky and Santa seem to have decent communication so far, just defending their towers, making sure everything stays where it is. And the tower goes down for Flicky. Flicky will try his best to get back in time, but gives up, realizing yeah, it's, it's not worth it. I mean, well, behind, this, behind all this push. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's... Both of them do. So it's pressure, but for the sake of map control, not for the sake of winning a fight. Interesting is that he decides to keep this this forward base a bit preserved for a bit longer, uh, while taking a more forward base, allowing him to get a bit of a extra defense. He can get some omnivores yeah, sure. there to help reinforce the defense as well. So it's always an interesting choice on how you want to go about it. Mask What's interesting about visible. that is hydraulics. It's an alley only base, but hydraulics has so far been focusing so heavily in mass hunters, which are alley only units, that it kind of makes sense. And a question, yeah, you're right. What is the next tech path for Hydrox? And here oh, we go. Oh, it, it is Dread Sisters. Just a bunch of Dread Sisters. <laughs> yep. Ready to pound a lot of damage. Ooh, getting the full Ooh. surround. Magical and Hydrox jumping on top of their opponent. Magical able to get in the flank. Santa Claus dropping the Red Harvest. Hydrox answering in kind. Magical with Zal as Flicky responds as well. Hydrox, though, getting the surround on Santa's forces. Taking the win off of that. Flicky coming in to try to reinforce. And Magical, though, still has the pressure. Magical gets pushed back a bit by Flicky. Flicky able to come through, cutting a swath into Hydraulics' force, weakened from the offering. And now Flicky saving the day. Flicky coming in just the right time to get on his opponent. And, you know, most of the units are just dead at this point. He's going to keep jumping on whatever's left. And Magical and Hydraulics in full retreat at this point. They don't really put the units. All in all, I'm not even sure who won that fight, really. Like, Yes, yeah, Santa did survive. Santa lost all his units, but none of his units were that expensive, right? The Dread Sisters were coming out afterwards. It was the first fight. Mm -hmm. Behind this, Team Ice got their, their third bases just a bit faster than their opponents. Oh, wait, no. I, Flicky got the in-location in base. Yeah, it's Flicky really got the close. safe third base. Santa's still not expanding. Oh, wrong oh, no, they have. Sorry, Flicky they are expanding. Expand. Flicky was oh, already ready. Oh, nicely this. done. Flicky knows what they're dealing with. Oh, yeah. Magical loves getting so few from just coming out for the fight. And now they're both just fighting on both sides of the map. Yeah, that's been that's a crazy talking, match yeah, so far. It this has. has and this is what I was talking about earlier with the Blood Wells. Is, this is something Santa learned from the spiders is Blood Wells are really good. Yeah, getting that man up, especially when you have that many Dread Sisters. And you can root your opponent, stop them from jumping on you. But his opponent's also Mala, has the Dread Sisters, can root and... Oh, and set a Birthing Storm. Yeah, Birthing Storm to go to units. Thing is, Santa's in a bit of a bad position now. He's basically getting attacked. Oof, and he's about to get Santa, surrounded. They, uh, they got the defensive position, but they don't have... They don't have a lot of energy left on the blood well. Dropping the rain of blood, going for it! Like, nope, forget it. I'm gonna... I have to push back. Best defense, good offense, and hydraulics. Look to respect that. Going back to the tower. Magical joining them, but... Santa able to start getting a Kittle Cascade going. Santa's able to start getting a Kittle Cascade going. Team Ice retreating away from their tower, getting hit more and more, trying to find their own kittles in there, but it's Team Fire just getting the small surrounds here and there, taking out small chunks of Hydraulics' army, Magical's army. Forest retreat into Hydraulics' third. Magical looking to reinforce, but not able to find a whole lot of purchase. Hydraulics desperately trying to save their base, unable to come back. Magical throwing forces into the grinder. Both Hydraulics and Magical... Holding back on the front line, on the high ground, Santa and Flicky coming up to get them. Nothing really present to defend, except for a Dread Sister route. And that he's won't be enough. He's coming in with units as fast as he can. Here comes the push. And Santa and Flicky are not giving up on this push. They're still going for it, even using Mala's Red Harvest to jump on top. Careful of the towers. That's always a hard position to attack into. But there's not that many units. Four Team Ice, Team Ice units are coming in. The reinforcements are faster on their side. And as they Magical come in... Behind, though. Magical yeah. is reinforcing from the flank. So Santa and Flicky will pull out of the main natural area. They still got the base. Like they got the base. They didn't take a whole lot of losses. They significantly reduced Magical Hydraulics' army. 
Yeah, we can look at the army value on the on the on the dashboard at the bottom. Two thousand, one thousand against forty five hundred, and in a mirror matchup like this, that's a big difference. <laughs> and on top of it, they're going to get the ancient, yeah, the ancient. That's a good and finishing. possibly the expansion. This Getting is a to tough expansion here, to take. Yeah, it's a really tough expansion to take. Flicky pulling out of there is magical. Able to stop a few of the units from escaping, but ultimately Flicky is able to regroup, get a decent arc on Magical's army. It needs to be careful as the Red Harvest is active. As each unit spawns, the army is going to multiply into Kedos. Uh, but Santa's coming for the surround after getting the, the Ancient. And that surround comes through. Uh, Flicky, do they go too far behind? That's a, that is risky there. Santa Claus might get trapped out. Flicky looking to come back as Santa's retreating. There's Red Sisters on the retreat and the root. The Oof, expensive units get, sp get, get sniped there. Yeah, that was Dread Sisters are all gone now. Or uh, several of them are gone now. Not all of them. Santa's been building... Santa's got like half a dozen of them to begin with. Yeah, he, he's been enjoying his Red Sisters. Yeah, they, got, they have quite spiders. a few. They have quite not a going, few. Yeah, not going for spiders quite yet. And both these armies are very mobile, very strong spellcasters. Santa might want to head back to a tower to heal up and get his units up and... Well, get the mana back from that blood world mm. as you mentioned earlier. Uh, behind all this, game state, hydraulics on two bases, team fire kind of ahead from all those bases. The fights have equalized the army count a bit. Flicky's the one that's slightly ahead, but not but the biggest margins. Getting that extra base early really helps. So that's the thing, is that early base in the center, like that, not having that did make it a little harder for hydraulics to defend that push up the ramp earlier. Now yeah. they are getting it, so any further assaults from team fire into... Magical Hydraulics' main base are going to be that much harder. That's, it's one of those things that really made that earlier fight work for Santa da, back at uh, in front of uh, Santa's Natural. Having the tower here absorb a lot of damage just, just made them a bit longer to survive. And the Blood Plagues are coming down, and Flicky might just have to give up on this base. He's going to try and save it for sure, They're but... going to try, but Santa's out of position. It's a 2v1, and Flicky does not have the, does not have the unit's advantage to take it. Yeah, smart move from Flicky. Just give up on the base, don't lose the big army. No. You can take it back. Yeah, you'll take it back immediately. It's a bit of a pain, but ultimately it leaves you effectively even with your opponents. Exactly, as long as he has his three bases up as... Well, as Hydraulic's still trying to get his third base up and running. That's true, actually. Hydraulic's going have to rebuild the third base. They've gotten... They're getting their fourth, but... This may come at the cost of Magical losing their third. Oh. That's a big May! Oh, coming in... Flicky on the, yeah, it's on the rear guard. The blood holding plagues, back Hydraulics' powerful. army. Blood, pay, blood plagues turning Flicky's army into mush. Into Kittle. All for Hydraulics. Complete loss of Flicky's army. Hydraulics now has a significant army advantage coming through here. Magical flanking as well to help out. Oh, and man. it's just completely turned on. Magical's blood plagues there. Continuing to just wreck... Santa and Flicky's force. And Santa, going from Flicky were, oh. Santa and Flicky were such a good position before this, but their army just got evaporated there with those blood plagues, bringing all those units to zero HP or close to it. And now they're on the retreat. Behemoth's coming out. They'll be able to defend from the top of the hill with their reinforcements. But what a big army team fight win for Magical's team. And they change for a base again. Just one small army base loss. Not even, actually. They didn't even lose the base. Oh, they did. Sorry. They did barely lose the base. But that, yeah, not... not yeah, not, not in exchange for full enough. army. Not in exchange for full army. Not at all. Not at this stage in the game. I love the blood plague just keeping the units at base, stopping them from uh, from attacking too far in. So that's well, magical. Maybe out of position here. Actually, getting ambushed by Flicky's bone stalkers. Same time, magical's gone around the side. Wants to take another base out of Flicky, getting rid of their frontline natural. Nothing to defend that. We're all just Still. jumping through the blood plagues all the time. <laughs> it, it has a pretty big effect over time, but at least his defend is natural. Lost a few workers. Oh, they did. Well. Drop, drop Zol had a bit of, had a bit of back line. Oh, here comes Red Harvest again, and that's when you gotta run. You don't want to get get stuck in between all those kiddos again. It's always the concern, and there it goes just really making it difficult. Still oh, the offerings. The yep. Oh, that's the that's a problem. Lose the yeah, behemoths significantly reduces the amount of frontline that Team Fire has. 
Like, having those Kittle available is a lot. Okay, this time Hydraulic's trying to head into the base, but there's enough static defense that might just be enough for Santa to hold on while his reinforce come in, but there's Behemoth on Magical's side. Oh, oof. Behemoth, not a whole lot of things to fight them with. How's this going to work out? He's going to do his best in beginning some of his units to drop into the fight, and Santa's going in alone. Flicky's still... Still at the back, 2v1, all units are jumping, doing their best to jump into the fight. The few units at the back, shooting from afar. The Dislodger here from the Red Sears, uh, the Dread Sisters. But it's just not quite... Is it going to be enough? Hydraulic's kind of getting split out. Magical off the side... Hy the Hydraulic's Magical pulling back, possibly to get a surround off on their opponents, but not quite able to, as Hy Magical and or Santa Claus and Flicky came to push in. But the pressure may start turning into too much. Red plagues, red plagues and kittles everywhere. Aren't. Yeah, red plagues <laughs> and kittles everywhere. And Santa and Flicky did not come in with a stronger army. But they pulled hydraulics out, pulling out their, pulling out all the masked hunters. Hydraulics now has very little frontline army, giving Santa Claus and Flicky an opening to pull in, get the behemoths. If it gets behemoths down, Santa Claus and Flicky will have a a lot more room to maneuver around in this fight. Oof. Well, behind all this, Hydraulics kept his expensive units alive, and that's what matters. Keeps his Dread Sisters and two of his Behemoths alive. Uh, of course, the rest of his army is in the back lanes being produced, and we see the huge line of army coming from the map, and they're coming in to help reinforce. Uh, Santa Flicky going to try attacking the same spot again. Well, let's see what they find. It's... A lot more roots, a lot... Oh, they do get the Red Seers! Magical losing the Red Seers means no Blood Plague. No Blood Plague is another asset that allows... That allows Pizza Delivery Squad all the room in the world to maneuver. Yeah, Pizza Delivery Squad trying to jump on their opponent, getting rooted when they try to jump, but that Blood Plague in the middle there. Oh, Flicky. So many Blood Plagues on Hydraulics' force. Magical Santa with the flank. Do they have any Dread Sisters? Can they set up the last bit with... Oh, they can't quite set up the Kittle. Can't quite set up the Birthing Storm. Well, he gets the Birthing Storm, but it's too little too late. As most of the units already died. Reinforcements coming in, but Santa is out of army. He's reproducing as fast as he can, but there's really not much left as Magical and Hydrox really took the flank there, took the win. They got Blood Plague to death. Wasn't enough. Their army is surviving. Their army's surviving. It's thriving. It's getting rid of this expansion. Santa Claus and Flicky trickling in reinforcements to try to deal with this. It's magical distracting Flicky's army by threatening their own third. Santa Claus trying to set up some Kittle threat, but it's simply not enough to be meaningful. Oh, man. It's, it's falling apart. Santa and Flicky, they tried. They really pushed this, but Magical Hydraulics taking a few good fights. I mean, really, it was that that, ex that attack on the 9 o'clock center expansion, or the, the 10 o'clock center expansion that wrecked Santa Claus and Flicky's army, and from here it's been an uphill battle trying to regain their position. Yeah, they've had a few good fights as well, right? Trying to attack into this center central position of Hydraulics. This, uh, not sure, 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock, I guess, position of, of Hydraulics. Kind of in the middle. Getting that power camp might be a difference maker. Getting that power to Red Harvest can really turn a fight. Especially if uh, Team Ice is not jumping for it, because they just don't have that many units to kill it quickly no, enough. No, not, not without risking losing a base. Especially now the Southeast is getting attacked by Magical, and Hydraulics is applying pressure to the center. Like, Flicky trying to do it, they can, but the pressure is just too much. Hydraulics able Here's to get up the hill? Are they able to the hill? Flicky and Magical? They use the final Red Harvest to get those Keedles out. They do, and that's, that is so effective. Pushing Santa Claus out. Flicky has been routed as well, and now Team Ice has that center ancient. They got this game in the... This game is theirs to lose. Santa Claus and Flicky are desperately trying to find the path to make that happen, but it's getting further and further away. Ancient down, Magical and Hydraulics refreshed on Pyre as they go for the base assault. And at this point, Santa and Flicky just hanging on by a thread, trying to get their units out. Uh, but the army is so large for her opponent, and there's it's a little bit puny. Reinforcements come quicker, but the reinforcements are smaller than the main army of the opponent. 
That's always going to be an issue as a magical attack on both sides at once. <laughs> as uh, Hydraulics content just taking out his opponent's main side. And what a game this was. Both players, both teams doing their best at this point. Uh, team I just finishing the job off as uh, Santa and Flicky coming to terms and need to figure out what the hell to come back in the next game. That is what's going to be about. What is the next game? What is the strategy? Because, well, this one has gone to Magical and Hydraulics. To be fair, like, they weren't the game the whole time. This wasn't a stomp in any way. The Both teams had their advantages, advantages, and it came down to a few fights going the wrong way and trying to get mm -hmm. back at the spells, the immortal abilities, the Red Harvest, really making a huge impact throughout. And yeah, we'll have to see you for... Um, for the next game. We will, and that's going to be up to Santa and Flicky for what map they want to do this on. I mean, it's I'm assuming Embargo, right. but... Yeah, let's see if they head back to Meme Embargo for the next map and set up their meme strategies to willing to go for him. Again, I'm expecting Icors. I do I do want some more Icors. Thing is, like, with the Zakal meta, Icors are just kind of uh, <laughs> kind of getting a counter a bit, just a tiny bit. See what's up. We'll see how they come up with us. They need another strategy. Uh, whoever ends up losing this one will have to go to the to the lower bracket, facing off against, uh, uh, I believe it's Pigeon Zoo versus two, Team 2T. The T team versus Pigeon Zoo. Whoever ends up winning that best of one will go up. That is correct. Yeah, lose the semis right there. You're absolutely right. We'll be heading into this next game. As Lost Province, the map that Santa chooses. Interesting. Not me embargo, going back to the classics they all know oh, and right. love. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused because they were really keen on embargo earlier. I mean, he, he wanted the memes on it. Unfortunately, it didn't even get casted. But we saw in chat that uh, Tom Jack attack said that was a great game, great funny strategy. Like, oh, man, I, I'll we'll see it one day, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, well. Alas. Today was not the day. Alas, Flicky's microphone. <laughs> exactly. And I gotta get those uh, microphones that don't have weird drivers. Yeah, I've, I'm really curious which microphone that was. So heading into the game on Lost Province. Different map for sure. A bit more defensible naturals. But really didn't come down to natural in that fight. Came out to... Well, the scent, you kind of have to choose which side to attack on. That's... Yeah, like... A, yeah. Yeah, because it's very easy to get split up. It's very easy to get... It's actually kind of hard to even get a whole army in one ramp. Exactly. Going up the ramp and figuring out how to attack and getting into it. That's, yeah, it's always kind of tricky. We saw earlier in the winter semis how, like, if you're not careful up ramp, it's it can be death. Absolver <laughs> death. Ah, the good Absolver death. That, that, that's one way to go, you know, just getting shot by light particles or magic particles. I'm not sure what type of particles. I think it's actually the other way around. I mean, the, the graphics don't show, but I think the idea is supposed to be more like it's draining stuff mm. around it rather than hitting it with plasma or whatever. Mm. Yeah, it's just scary things. Scary killer instincts. Yeah, so oh, that's that's the thing. Yeah, it seems like everyone selected their immortal. We're ready to head on to Lost Province. We're in Western Shum on Shale. As this time around, we won't have full Aru. We will have some Aru, though. So. Yes, we'll have, we'll have some Aru. But not full Aru, like last game. Get it changed no. up a bit, have more of a distinct no. look with one person going for a jar instead. And that person will be magical this time, not hydraulics. Yeah. Always switching it up, right? Hydraulics started with. Uh, he, mm -hmm. he didn't do the full tour though. Hydraulics took on Mala, didn't go for Azul. He's been happy with Mala, a Jari, or Zoom. And, uh, well. Well. well I mean, okay. Well. Hello, well. partial worker push. See, this is interesting. There's only three. So it's not really oh, a worker rush. Oh, no, yeah, the for it's more just, more just smart use of workers for extra damage, for extra pyre, for, but in a way that's not clearly telegraphed. And not soul telegraph, right? You'll come in and you'll see, why is everything late? Why didn't you expand? Why yeah. didn't you take any ether? Wait, why does no, this make that... no sense? Oh, no, they are here. Yeah, that's something I was like, I'm double checking. Okay, they didn't crash, right? <laughs> no, no, they're, oh. they're fine. They're still, no, they're they just... still have their resources. They're still doing stuff. They're Don't just doing their thing. thing. Yeah. They, yeah. Not... Oh, they're, they're waiting boxing. for blood wells. Oh, that is clever. Yep. There you go. Double blood well. 
Well, see, that's kind so of. So look at the one... pyre building up, and I'm like, well, they need 35 pyre for a blood well. Is it 34? Yeah, they got to wait a couple seconds. They'll be fine. I think it's like one blood well would have been enough for that. Because the part I'm just like, well, one blood well for both of them, and then you can use another blood well for it. But in either case, they'll both make a lot of proxy buildings, as they have 1,200 <laughs> saved up. Just for a lot, lot, lot of uh, yeah. basic buildings. Probably, okay. Again, yeah. They do need the room. Yeah, they'll, they'll just be going mass bone stalkers. It makes sense now because bone stalkers are just slightly better. Yeah, they're clearly than... hydraulics and magic. There's pinging somewhere. It's like, okay, something's up. Something's going on. I don't know what it is. Oh, it's almost kind of funny because it's like, did they crash? Did they crash? They no, they're playing crash. Santa. They've seen enough weird shit to know I, that. No, but Santa's done this before where after technical difficulties were happening and crashes were happening, they played a game where they did nothing in their main base, build up money, and their opponents scouted out, and once they left, they just suddenly spammed a bunch of buildings and then ended up winning. It was like this weird, like, no-build mix-up. Yeah, but Because it wasn't about... clear, like, were they crashing? And Flicky's been crashing this whole time, so it's like, did they crash again? Is there nothing in their main base because they crashed? Yeah, they'll look on Discord. Like, they'll, they'll look on Discord right now. It's all about like, okay, gotta figure out where the attack is coming from. Yeah. And here come the fit, the thirty bone stalkers all at once. The thirty bone stalker attack. There you go. And they're just gonna jump on everything. Their opponents went for the yep. most greedy type of play. Well, not the most greedy, but expanding early, so greedy enough. Greedy enough. Yeah. Hey, here comes the push. Here comes the massive units and magical and hydrox must be screaming in chat. What the heck is going on? As their first units are going down. And they're not the only ones that are about to get destroyed by this. Can I get more blood wells in here? I, no, just just moats for extra damage. Of or course. some gets for extra damage. Yeah. And that's about, do they want to jump on their opponents as fast as possible? Units are coming in. Re yeah, they're just going to counter attack. But at this point, as long, they have moats on the, on the field, so they can just remake them anywhere. Of course, the teapots yep. finally saw it, but... but Is it going to matter? Way. Like, do you have the units to deal with it? Sheesh. Force yeah, there's like one, one ether extraction. This really does look like Flicky crashed if you hadn't been scouting around. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here come, here come the symbiotes to kill off the support yeah, attack. They'll, they'll be fine. The front are doing their best. Uh, yeah, mass hunters do have the support of the towers. They can heal up. They can make more. It's, it comes down to the timing. Okay, he's just going to pull no, back yeah. on. Get oh, out no. of there. Oh, they missed the, they missed the boat. They moved out of the way. Oh, but Santa had no. already gone home. Has that already gone home, so he doesn't care? <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's all about the fight at the front, though. We're going to see Hyde Magical doing his best at the back, but here comes the shields coming down, but the shields are not quite enough with that many Bone Stalkers up on the field. Okay, oh. love this from Santa. Focus for and down the production buildings. There's no more production buildings, no more units being built. Yep, that's just way less of a threat. Oh, five more Mass Hunters do drop, and that's going to be a bit of a concern. Like, 10 Mass Hunters, well, that's obviously twice as hard to deal with. But hey, if you can get that last... Oh, they've got... There's a moat going in the 9 o'clock. Trying to take out... Yeah, it's trying to get another expansion just to save the day. Yeah, you have because to. Because at this point, it's like, yeah, they have to. Just, if they lose that last one, they're done. This is all base race now. Yeah, there is one Omnivore on Santa's side. So Santa's going to be fine. Of course, uh, and the, the, dervish side, the Dervish route. Ooh, Dervish. Magical getting their tech up in time, having not lost the, the Monastery of Izer, they were able to get a Soul Foundry, and thus able to get Dervish, and make all these Bone Stalkers have a much, much harder time. Reinforcements will be coming in from Santa Claus and Flicky. They are still going to go for that last Acropolis, just to try to take the game. I'm sure they've realized at this point there's been expansions built elsewhere to look for them. But are they yeah, going to get this first one? That seems less likely than... Yeah, it seems pretty unlikely, actually. Even with the Dervish going down, there just aren't that many Bone Stalkers left. It really came down flicky. Yeah, no, Hydraulics' counterattack really did a big damage on his opponent, right? The Here comes his hole for Flicky trying to deal with a bit of the units, and Santa's still making more units, but he doesn't have the economy he started with. And no, with they this... don't have all that. They don't have 1,200 alloys saved up each. Oh, man, well, what a crazy strategy from these, from these guys. Killing the main is still useful, as that's where the production buildings are going to be for magical. Oh, man. Yeah, they're going to... What do they... Oh, I mean... Yeah, Flicky's rebuilding his stuff. Flicky's yeah, slowly rebuilding their everything. stuff. Unfortunately, having slowed them down, they don't know where those proxy expansions are. The proxy... The hidden expansions are. And the main base is getting rebuilt as well. 
Santa really collecting that power. He's going to get a lot of souls out to help with the fight. And oh wow, the yeah, the mods are going to symbiotes are going to go do it on the other side. And if only a few separate those bone stalkers can jump on and even get the surround from Flicky. He can body block and keep him out of the way and Magico wisely heads to his own tower. Gets healed immediately. Yeah, Uncharted, like, okay, Santa Claus is like just going to go back up. <laughs> is that Yeah, there you go. Just don't don't fight in a static defense. Go around it, go up. Go up the ramp so you can find an opening in the main. Because if you can find an opening in the main to take out their Acropolis, then that just makes it easier. Yeah, because right now Machiko is still on two bases, while Bronze are both on one base, still fully engaging this all in. Yeah, it's like, don't go up yet. Yeah, there you go. There you go. You got, you got it. You got it, oh. Santa. You know, and Flick, you know what you're up to. Yeah, stop some mining, same time. Counterattack coming, but this time there's an Omnivore. <laughs> yeah, no, the Sipari are not going to get through. Flicky, Flicky is well defended enough to deal with this. And it's down to get rid of the Acropolis. Zol then... summon from Santa. Zol summon again from Santa. Making sure the units are stay at bay. And Magico is not really even trying to defend it this time. <laughs> Edrox is doing his best to help defend, help his ally. This might... Oh, even getting the Red Harvest and getting some Ketos. But Ketos oh. with not much army behind it might not be enough, is it? Here come the reinforcement well, jumping on top of stuff. The Kittle They're... are not bad as a distraction, and not to mention, if they're able to embiggen some of those mass hunters, that that's extra assets. Like, this is going to go down, like, this is down to the individual unit. Oof. Yeah, Flicky's... the party's coming for Magico. Mm, yeah, this is becoming a little bit harder to defend here. Flicky won't have Zul for long enough to get rid of all the Sapari. While the production structures are going down for Magical, they have a base they can start rebuilding. Santa and Flicky, though, they, I mean, they are... They still have the initiative. They still have the the damage advantage. They can get rid of the last couple of production structures. Then they might still be able to take this. Oh, well, only three Sapari left. Oh, one Bone Sapari stalker. with no competition. One Bone Stalker. No Bone Stalkers. Sapari can take out Flicky's main base. Oh, Dervish are at the back, but Dervish are about to get around. They found a way out. I wasn't sure if that was uh, it or not. Yeah, but the Sail Foundry hasn't found a way out. That, that's not a lot for this world. Yeah. Final Zoe comes out. And they need to kill that before the Dervish. No, oh, actually, Dervish are going to die immediately if they do come out. Oh, of course, there the they go. The, base. Yeah, the issue is yeah, still the base. bases on the map. The secret it bases is. are There's... still doing damage. And, of course, Magical and Hydraulics can just rebuild their mains if their secret base gets attacked. Like they, Santa and Flicky, I don't think they're aware of these secret bases, and it's coming. It's going to become increasingly difficult to take them out. Like they must be aware there's something now, because they've taken out all the visible bases in the main, and the game is still not over. It's about finding the next point out. Even though their opponents can still expand from here, it's uh... they can. Oh, underspines. Okay, bit of tech coming in from Santa. Yeah, slow him down. Slow them as you push forward. At this point, Santa wants to attack another base. He he wants to find another place to attack. But with a dervish out, oh, he can deal with this okay. As uh, Magical going for another counterattack. Just just a crazy game overall. They're just attacking from all sides, <laughs> figuring stuff out. It really is coming down to, to they, they don't know where this expansion is. And Santa Claus has actually set up a hidden base of their own in the northeast corner. Yes, he should. Just in case. Scouting is coming through. Flicky will find out what's going on momentarily. Yeah, I love this for Magical because Magical yep. does have Magical does have a recall if he need if need be. He can just jump in and jump out as soon as possible. That's assuming they hold on long. Oh no, they will probably recall immediately because I'm thinking it's like they, they, if they get jumped, if their Acropolis goes down too fast, but then of course that's the question of okay, great, but if I get rid of your Grove Heart, what are you gonna do? Around oh, here. hydraulics! Cut off in the middle, but able to wipe out all these bone stalkers. Red, harvest, red, red harvest, harvest winning the day. Oh, Offering nice. bone stalker with red harvest, absolutely saving everything. Oh, Magical no, and hydraulics. Oh, they have much more? No, they don't. Yeah, they're. they just spines going down. They're trying, but it's just not enough firepower. Man, hydraulics. That was that was a close run th thing there, but they got it. 
And no, Magical Santa's secret base. Yeah, Santa's they're going to be spotted. Base, well, does seem that Hydraulics and Magical have had their bases. Like, everyone kind of knows where everyone else is. At this point, you know is, that it's yeah. not enough. <laughs> yeah, if you you know it's great, but it's not. You don't do. You, can you do anything about it? Like magical hydraulics can possibly do something about it. They don't have as much opportunity to rebuild stuff, but they have much more stuff, or had more stuff that might be turning around. Yeah, but, uh, magical just lost all of his stuff. He has two dervish left, but that's a lot of offering up ma mass hunters coming in from hydraulics, jumping at his opponent, and nothing specifically designed to deal with them. Same time, there's no more Red Harvest, and the Red Harvest in here, so with a decent amount of support, he might be able to get... It's a close fight, but oh, this... Oh, oh, the surround, are no, so no, it's a round for Magical, coming around the side. Hydraulics has a slightly better arc, but Ma Santa had slightly better, more resilient units. On top of extra rootway in the middle of the fight. Now the opening is there. Hydraulics has rebuilt built so their main obvious. base. Yeah, it's yeah. a good defensible point. Slowly... Getting it out. Okay, get, kill the Soul Foundry. Stop those tech yep. units from coming out. But of course, there's Resonance coming out. Uh, not Resonance. There's Zakaz coming out from Santa. To help deal with those Dervish. There are, but they help deal with a lot of stuff. Yeah. You they, they, they have so have much to HP. Deal with the They're a great frontliner. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to deal with the Dervish, do you? Don't have, you don't want to. Okay, Santa has Omnivore set up, so his base are kind of well defended. Well enough that the attack can't come for force. And Flicky still making his bone stalkers ready to defend everything. Yeah, this is gonna be a perfect secret base kind of for Hydrox as they don't want to go back there, they want to attack the other spots. And as Hydrox. Of course they attack the other spots and it's like, oh wait, what the heck? Stuff is still here, what's going on? Exactly. Uh magical. Well yeah, he made the dervish, but his opponent made the made this a cause to counter the dervish. And the units are getting around in the wrong spots. They're getting focus fired down. Santa coming in back to try and get a pyro counter. Well, he stopped his opponent from getting it. And they, and they managed. No, they don't. Hydraulics does grab it. More red harvests to worry about on the way then. Oh, and the dervish coming around the side. Magical able to threaten that northeast hidden base, while Flicky unable to take out Hydraulics' southwest hidden base. Soften it up a little bit, but not take it out. That's the base finally done. Oh no. Yeah, there's an issue. Santa's reinforcements always coming into the eyes of his opponent. His opponent just jumps on them, and gets caught. Of course, now on the retreat, Santa's army is plenty powerful. And Fleeking I'm in for the flank, but Hydraulics sees it and goes the other way around. Well played there by Hydraulics. Still losing a lot. Still Santa Claus is able to take out a lot. Yeah, the retreat is always is always a painful part after this. They have the tower to help defend. Uh, are we willing Santa, to back into the tower? Do they care? Are they going, they're dangerous? going for it. Got Zol on top of this too. I have to deal with Heaven's Aegis, but Heaven's Aegis takes a little while to get going. Doesn't help the tower much either. And no, Santa and Flicky do not care. Taking out the army, taking out the tower, taking what losses they may in the process, and there is not a whole lot that Magical and Hydraulics have left to hold off. Hydraulics, er, Magicals, their hidden expansion now being attacked. They're out! Hydraulics soon follows, and Santa and the Pizza Delivery Squad take a game against Magical Hydraulics. Pizza 15 was well minutes! 15 minutes yeah, after the happens. start of this cheese! That's what happens. You triple proxy bases, and you're going to end up with... What the heck is like, this? Triple? Triple proxy base per player? Yeah, yeah just, just, just fun stuff, you know. All right. Oh, the so the squad, uh, that was, delivers. man, that's a thing that happened. Pizza that has been delivered from the pizza delivery squad. Yeah. And we'll be heading for game three. Oh boy, has it. <laughs> pizza uh, has sure been map? delivered. Didn't See, realize I'd ordered a whole stack full of like pure cheese. Mm. No, no other topics. Extra cheese. Extra, extra cheese. Che well, yeah, as much cheese as pizza pay. with extra cheese. With cheese on top. Mm. And cheese sticks. Or cheese oh, bread, yeah. rather. Gotta love the cheese bread. Always complements the pizza so well. A little bit of garlic really in there. Does. And garlic is just part of cheese. You can have I garlic just, cheese very easily. Yeah. No? I just, no, I just... I'm... 
I don't okay. want to get too personal right now, but I shouldn't be eating a lot of cheese right now. Aw, that's, uh, like, that's a death sentence. Not, not, it's not that bad. It's just not like right now. Maybe next week, but not right now. That's the okay, exact next moment. Week. Okay, next week, next week you can have a platter full of cheese. As yeah. much in your as much on your pizza as an immortal, if you desire. Yeah, but I I can't do that right now, and that's mm. that upsetting. I stay as I had a grilled cheese for lunch. Mm. <laughs> that's the way you you gotta roll sometimes. Yeah, I guess. Got to roll with different type of cheese, cheese in different formats. Maybe just some vegan cheese. Actually, I actually have never tried that. I guess that's true. It's not great. No, oh, okay. That's that's disappointing. It's like, yeah, you know, you have a replacement. You get excited. You're like, oh, I I, I can still be. I mean, I'm a... not lactose intolerant. It's just don't don't want to get into it. I just shouldn't yeah, have sure. too much. That's like at all like anything that could be a problem for anything. Just for very a week. Like, give or take, yeah. <laughs> so we are on to game three, as San and Flicky are on the map they originally, originally, originally wanted to play on. Like originally, originally wanted to play on. It's Magical's Call, but. This is the map that they had asked for in the first game that took 40 minutes to not happen, which... Hey, and on top if you're watching of it, on YouTube, I'm not sure how that's going to work out in the editing. I genuinely don't know what I'm going to do about that. I, I... I don't know. I've been getting more aggressive with my editing lately, and I don't know if I want to keep that as a thing in yeah, the video. You're... So you might not have seen the 40 minutes of build-up to the first match. In fact, come to think of it, you probably won't have seen it. But there was on stream. <laughs> anyway, Embargo was the map they wanted. So now they finally get it. So I'm really curious what they're going to do with the map that was Meme-Bargo. Yeah, I'm actually just happy that we have all three maps being played this time around. Uh, Me too. In this best of three, we had all three of our main maps. So that's going to be a fun time. Seeing all the different strategies. Of course, uh, Lost Province is not a map that you're supposed to do that, but it worked out, so I have nothing to say about it. I don't know how that worked. Actually, no, that, that map, that area of the map was often used for cheese. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because just, it didn't is, happen it, before. It, uh, it's also a good way to just go into the main as well. You just break down yeah. the rocks and go in the main. Good yeah, memories. but it didn't happen before because you couldn't build blood wells that cheaply. Like, it was 50 pyre before. All right. Yeah, the 35 does help. Yeah, but 35 means just as we saw, take out one tower, and then wait five. Uh, wait like 10. Take out one tower, wait about 15 seconds, and you're good. Hydraulics heading up for the strategy we saw in the last time he played here, setting up the playing as Orzum again and setting up yep. the Legion Hall at the front, and maybe he'll take out the tower immediately if his opponents decide to go for this accomplish. Or just for a very greedy expansion, which means not really use. Well, oh. that's... It got the backyard expansion for both players, which is an obvious safe bet. So not going to be that greedy. Yeah, it's sad that this get the Teapot win. War win. War one? Yeah, Teapot war one. And both of these guys not heading up for any... Ether Until it turns. Until it makes a single turn and the moat gets it. Or Symbiote gets it. Yeah, Symbiote was happy. So it's like, I've been chasing yep. this forever. I finally got my piece of tea. Finally caught the teapot. And then he can keep it as a souvenir. You know, a little porcelain piece. You yeah, can just bring exactly. around. It's like, what's that? Oh, it's an old teapot handle from a teapot that I killed. It's like, you killed a tea? You killed a teapot? Killed the teapot. I shattered it down pieces. myself. Yep. Hey, here we go. Hydraulic's doing the same thing as last time. Heading for the tower, destroying it as fast as possible. And suppose probably were playing instead of watching or trying to launch a game so they don't don't see it oh and here come the well oh well there's there we go there's the icon have might just come too late well for this yes no, to, to defend this tower. This, this tower is doomed yeah, but unfortunately broadly speaking it's still if we see the similar strategy we saw magical and hydraulics pull off in the game against pigeon zoo on this map it's icors are a really good choice because there was a lot of light units being thrown out there. Like a lot of, like a large number of units that are very clumped up, that aren't very mobile, that Icors could make short work of. Oh, yeah. Now, granted, they didn't shift into Zakal, and they will be shifting into Zakal once they see Icor as a way to deal with it. <laughs> but yeah, I, uh... there's still a lot of units that are vulnerable to Icor that are currently yeah, in like... the field. 
everything is a bit vulnerable to a vomit cat. If the vomit cat gets its vomit on you. Yeah. Don't let the cat hey, vomit don't on you. Back. And also, yeah, you the cat's going to vomit. That's when you get a paper towel and make sure it vomits on the paper towel. Yeah, that makes it a lot easier to clean up the carpet, trust me. Yeah, mostly. Mostly to clean up the carpet. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> it's, it's so much easier if they don't, they don't actually hit the carpet. I'm also, happy. Nature's Miracle. Before. Not sponsored, but damn good stuff. I don't know what that is. Is that like Nature's Miracle is a spray. It's a spray that you put on that then it's kind of part bleach, part some kind of enzymatic cleaner. Hey. Anyway, it, it gets rid of the smell. It gets rid of the look. It makes it just so much easier to clean up. Anytime a cat vomits or anything on a carpet, and which has been very relevant. Mm -hmm. But yeah, speaking of vomit cats, vomit cats are here, and there's no paper towel to be found. Santa Claus, look at the flank on here. But look at the rest of micro. They the are, and they're doing a really good job too. Yeah, exactly. There, there's still some shots getting off because that's just how it works. And Zol at the back really dishing out the pain. Santa's gonna lose a few symbiotes here as he brings out this vomit cats to do the best they can, but the Zentari are good frontliners. Oh, that's. Yes, frontliners are They're own. good frontliners, but they're still weak to vomit cats. Oh, yeah. Vomit cats doing their best. I course just running around as uh, the few symbiotes that survive coming back home. And the tower at the front about to get relinquished once more. Hydraulics really wants to get it down. Is it going to get cancelled or just killed? Uh, it's going to get Ooh. killed. Oof, that's going to be an expensive loss. That is a lot of pyre. 75 pyre. That is a that is a Zol summon right there. Or a Red Harvest, either way. But I believe it was Flicky's Tower. Yeah, it, it, and it's, a good, it's such a good spot to have on a map. A good defensive position. You want to get it back up as soon as possible, but at what cost? It's, you you yeah. kind of want to use your spells for offensively as well. And stick away from the tower again. It's a good defensive spot. Attacking into it is a good way to lose. But if Vomit Cats are doing their job, Icors are jumping on all those weakened Centauri taken out immediately. And they are speed upgraded. They're fully upgraded Vomit Cats. Oh, they have the range as well? The range of the Oh, they're not fully upgraded. No, 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 no. They don't have the Red Veil yet. But they do have the speed upgrade. Speed upgrade is a decent thing. The range really oh, makes you're a right, big the difference range. when you have Oh, it. I gotta play with that more. Because it got slow down too. Yeah, the plus the range is such a difference maker in that. You just can't no, catch up to this. Micro. Yeah, no, it, it's it out like right now. We're seeing magical is able to take out Santa Claus, like Santa Claus's light course, because the range is about the same. So the kiting, even though it's good, magical is getting pot shots off, and that's thinning up Santa's army. If Santa got the range upgrade for the light course, they wouldn't have any problems with that. Like they they would be so far away, magical would never hit them with the bone stalkers. Well, here come the Icors coming from south. Gonna try some harass, but there's not too many units, and even then, Hydraulics moves his units out before Divine Cats can jump on. And Santa's gonna be disappointed here. He wanted to kill some units, wanted to kill some little baby angels. Santa's gonna have to kill those toothpick mm -hmm. holders. They're gonna try, they're getting surrounded into a dead end, and that is the end of that. Got. Cat got locked into an alley and was unable to get out. And there's more cats out of the way. You know, they have nine lives, and here come the next lives of those coming out and ready to roll. Of course, it's not that much of an army for Santa. Only at 300. He has to be taking out something behind us. Nope, mostly vomit cats. I oh, they are. They got the Red Bell. They have the Red Bell. Now, I'm curious if <laughs> the Red Bell is going to be used for the range for the range slowdown upgrade. So, but could the offering as could. well. They could do that. Oh man, this full power push is just coming down. Magical Hydraulics don't care, they're just coming forward. Santa forced to use Red Harvest to survive this, and survive and thrive he will through it as Zoe also gets summoned using all their power to just jump on their opponents and stop them from taking their bases. Uh, but Magical and Hydraulics didn't have to fight this, they're comfortable just heading back, losing a few units on a retreat. That being said, Santa Claus has been able to push this back quite effectively. Flicky's use of the call was great frontline. And now Magical and Hydraulics back to the tower, losing units left and right. Hydraulics down to almost nothing. Like a oh, wow. single Zephyr. Yeah, he's getting more Zephyrs on the way and behind us. Tacking up slowly. No, mostly just Zephyrs. Might yeah, get some Absolvers the again. They do, have, they do have options to go for air if they want to. Yes. Man, if Santa goes for that range upgrade, that's going to be so effective. <laughs> like, slowing down all these forces they try to run around? Yeah. Oh, that being said, Team Fire has just lost their their rocks. Magical's opened up the hole. 
are opening up the hole, rather. I haven't lost it yet, but they are opening up the hole. And once he gets in, there's going to be just another avenue that you have to defend. At least he mm -hmm. got this little squad on the back without losing much or anything at all, really. Good micro from Santa. Now Santa can drop those Bone Stalkers. Those what will be in... Yeah, yeah he's going to come in time. What? Flicky barely. Magical's not going to... Yeah, they're not going to go for suicide attack. Say the Bone Stalker's not going for the... Not going for the kill on the base. Probably wise. And he, okay, here they come. Icors, Santa Claus, pulling through once again. Finding. Getting surrounded a bit like this, but it's all about choosing which army to fight, yep. right? Santa's <laughs> made against those Bone Stalkers. Well, Flicky's oh, more yeah. made, but those Zephyrs are just decent against most things. They're good generalists, a bit more HP than everything, so they deal with everything decently well. And those Icors don't seem to have the range upgrade yet, so they can't deal with the Zephyrs easily. Well, at least so, Flicky was able yeah. to get his third base up. And yeah. That's what really matters. And your base is up and running. Opponents are still on two. Magico slowly getting his third base and putting it on the tower. So Hydraulics wants to defend this well. Uh, yeah, they know. They know. That's that's a vulnerable spot. Speaking of, though, you know, tower for a tower from the looks of it, that does pull Santa Claus out of... or means Santa Claus is way out of position. Flicky, defending on their own as Magical and Hydraulics, bear down in a 2v1... It's a choke point that Flicky can take advantage of, but they don't have a whole lot of, like, major zone control. So holding the line is proving to be significantly more challenging. Santa Claus coming around, will be able to hold the up. The flank is coming! Goes to the flank, takes out some of the reinforcements, pulling back some of Hydraulics' army, giving Flicky the opening to move through Magical. Santa Claus coming to reinforce more properly, but damage may have been done. Drops oh, the Red, red Harvest. harvest. There we go. Starting to get a bit of a turnaround here, thanks to the Kittle. And Magical retreats. Hydraulics going for a moving retreat. And all the back as Magical regroups, re-engages, but simply does not have the army to deal with this. And now Hydraulics? Kind of on their own, if they want to keep going with this. Yeah, but the thing is, that most of Flicky's army was also pretty much eliminated. There's That's true. There's mostly left. Yeah, but Icor's deal with most things except the, oh even there's a cause take care uh, oh there's a lot of icor hits. there are a lot of icor right now yeah team mice really going for that base they want it and here comes the spellcasters which makes such a big difference zo summon from a magical so summon again they they summoned it before it was really some effective and it should be able to help take out this expansion now but this has been they've exacted a massive toll from magical hydraulics piece of delivery squad Man, the tip they... They got a really big tip for that. That's gonna be... That's gonna be feeding them for a month. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's that's a lot of food coming in from Mal. A lot of blood from everything that dies. She can at least some big in her own units, make them a bit more powerful. And that's so many spellcasters. Oh, man. Trying to root everything. Oh, every time I you root, they cast from blood. I think the Icors may have gotten their upgrades. There we go. It kind of looks like things are slowing down when they're getting hit. Well, it might also be the root. It might be the root. Zone. You're right. I'm, I'm not sure... It's like, no, I think you're right. I think they have, I don't really, wait, oh man, I wish there was more indication of this. I really want to know, but mm, it's hard to say. Still, Santa's just going full, full bore on those. Hey, they got Dread Sisters coming in now. Yeah, he needs his Dread so Sisters to get Icors. healed up. He needs them to get they healed do. up, though. They got, they got Blood Wells. They don't have many towers. It's a bit of a shame. Yeah, as Flicky lost his front base, he's going to take the there secret one, more secret one in the back. Oh, the Ancient has spawned, and Team Fire is nowhere, team... is nowhere no, near. No, Team Ice has got this. But this is only the first Ancient, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, 50 like, Pyre It's not each. nothing, but 50 Pyre each is not going to necessarily win the game. Yeah, the one at 25 minutes is a bit of a bigger deal. Yeah, that, that's that's a bit bigger. Yeah, that's that's enough for an ultimate each, but this is only en this is not even enough for a tower each. Exactly. Coming in from all, all sides as oh, Magical scouts out the base at the top, and he'll send a squad what, there pretty what soon. What can they do about it though? Like they can send a squad, but remember, Santa has a rapid response team readily available. Oh, and he's not afraid to use it. Absolutely not. <laughs> Not Revenge. afraid to use as a front line force. Santa might be going a little bit, might be overextending on this one. They are overextending on this one. Flicky has to come in and try to save them. Their force is not in position. The Dress Sisters 
are falling. Santa losing all their tech units, all their Ikor. They have lost a significant chunk of their investments, making them up somewhat with Red Harvest as a call, but there's a Red Harvest Kittle. But that's just not enough. Unfortunately, that that positioning really getting punished hard for that. It's magical and hydraulics taking what they can. Granted, Flicky did save the day. Once again, Wait, Flicky coming in, saving the day, keeping Santa Claus from losing too much more. And it's now Santa Claus dangerous. can It's always a bit dangerous stacking the tower. And here comes the reinforcements from Ice at the, at the meantime. So uh, he'll have to do his best to reinforce. But yeah, you can't keep going on this push. And the best no. they could have really hope for there was just trading evenly, attacking into a tower with Red Harvest. He kept his Red Sisters alive. That's what we got to remember from this. Santa kept his That's Red true. Sisters alive. That's true. Only a few of them died. And they have enough left. And the Ikor, Ikor are not hard to rebuild. Like they are, they are alloy only. Dread Sisters cost a lot of ethers. This is a, this is a solid composition to keep going, assuming you don't have to deal with air units. This is a solid composition, like in terms of resource cost. Now Flicky has to deal with their base. Santa Claus providing a distraction just in case to make sure they don't get base traded. Oh, but Santa's about to get stuck there. <laughs> Yeah, if and you head into well. a corner like that, there's no way out. There's one way out, and that's going to be the way he came in with all the units. Here come the Zephyrs blocking the way, and Santa's in trouble. Yeah, Santa's it's a sacrifice they trouble. made. It's a sacrifice they made to make sure the Plinky could preserve their base without losing everything in the back lines. Santa does have a lot of resources in tow, and they can at least kind of hold the line. Oh, those Red Seers locking yes. down, getting rid of all of the mana from the Dread Sisters, completely stopping them from doing anything. Like a few birthing storms here and there, just not enough. Yeah, Santa uses, uses up his own army, but you know, being stuck, yeah, it goes both ways. As Flicky did stick his own opponents there. Uh, but here comes a reinforcement of Magical, and the, oh no. <laughs> Those poor Aculus coming in from the back and doing absolutely nothing before dying. Yeah, Flicky able to, able to once again hold the line well enough, but I, I think it was still good teamwork. Like, Santa Claus had a lot of resources in tow. They weren't, like, they weren't throwing away everything they had. And Flicky did need that as a distraction to make sure that Team Ice didn't go for the main base. They didn't go to the go for the throat while it was exposed. Exactly. Oh, and here comes the next ancient. This one gives a hundred each, and that's a. Is it a hundred each or seventy five? Uh, it's seventy five each. Oh, okay. Yeah. Still full power. That's true. It's still enough for a tower. Like it's still enough for most abilities. It's. This is where it starts to get more relevant to take the ancient. And. It's becoming that much harder to take it. Magical Hydraulics doesn't do the army. They are getting flanked by behemoths. Santa Claus, yeah, with those reinforcements coming in, is able to pull back Magical Hydraulics, force them into less optimal concave. But Santa and Flicky have taken so much damage. Their units are so... have taken so much attrition. Like, it, Flicky can't hold this without a tower to heal up. And now there comes the Ostrike, wiping out all of Flicky's army. Ostrike completely turning everything around. In. It's just, you can't go through without healing. The snap shields just aren't enough. Yeah, getting that tower from the front. Like, it's such a small detail, but Hydra has really set it up for this whole game to get map control in the center. If map control in the center comes, well, map control all over the place. You can just extend your map control, extend your arms to get, get yeah, on this map to On this map like no other. Yeah, we'll, we'll those towers set up like that. Yeah, it's really unfortunate for Flicky and Santa that they've really been needing to push so much higher into their abilities. Because that having a tower there to heal up, or even even just something further back in their on the natural plateau, it would at least be enough to get them the healing. So that if they get all that damage off spells, they don't just lose the army in the next fight. Robert, looking at the army value. Team Fire is actually ahead right now in army value, but of course value is not everything. There's other factors in how to take the fights and which you do the damage. Ostrike always They are, but part of that is Sharu. Part of that is Sharu, and the Ostrike comes through. Ikor run through it. Santa Claus taking some damage as a result, but not losing too much. Having to be worried about the roots. And High Magical Hydraulics pulling back into the tower, trying to bait Magical and Flicky in, or Santa and Flicky into it. Hydraulics with a pillar to capitalize on that bait. Santa Claus and Flicky forced to retreat, losing behemoth after behemoth. All the tech units go down. It's Magical Hydraulics. Their trap was set, it was sprung, and it worked perfectly for them. 
then getting killed one after the other. And yeah, the behemoths no, they're going are for the, here, this is this is the death blow. Magical and hydraulics. They're done paying for pizza. They're gonna take pickup. Yeah, they're picking up their opponents <laughs> piece by piece. And all the ingredients are just falling apart for uh, the pizza delivery squad, unable to keep it going. The Austrakes keep jumping forward, Aklux. The reinforcements come in, and at that point, he might say, ah, you know what, we can wait for the next, but the root stops him from escaping. Oh. You will not stop delivery forever, so they say. Of course, that tower. It's like, no, you're trying to deliver into, like... If you're trying to, if you do, well, if you order delivery, don't order delivery if you're living in a gated community that's surrounded by turrets with guns in. I, you typically won't get delivered to anymore. No. Not deliver it. No. Oh man. Oh. Setting up all those defensive spots, defensive spots, making sure all his places are well defended. Magical really keeping the east side of the map completely. That's the other story. No, it's, the story it's theirs. It's theirs. There is no taking that back. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's their issue of this game, right? They were never able to expand as much as they wanted to. Mm hmm. Well, this game it didn't matter so much in the early place. game, but now it's just becoming, it's becoming the main thorn in their side. And it's not like there aren't room. Like the western side is still kind of open. Flicky does have some expansions. Sand does some expansions, but. That they don't have the east side at all. Now they managed to break open any part of this line. It's, it's going to be relatively easy to take it out. But that breaking open any part of this line is the is the main hurdle. Yeah, Magical doesn't have that many units left, but the units he has, the the act looks and all the all the stag defense is enough that you can't really push mm -hmm. into it. If you try to push in, you'll just get killed by the act looks, just, and you have to run back away from them. Uh, and on top Senate? of it. I think Sam and Flicky are not going to go with that move. And from where they're at, other than defending their expansion, they can still break the rocks to open up the natural. I mean, there is a tower there, but it's just one compared to the rest of the defensive line. So, I mean, at the risk of it becoming a World War One simulator, <laughs> there is potentially still some room for Sam and oh, Flicky to start maneuvering around magical hydraulics confident in their defenses start pushing out oh dodge strikes oh wow so much damage coming through softening up everything flicky and magical or flicky and santa claus have and now santa claus the red harbor's trying to use that to once again add kittle to their army it's just having been softened up by the off strikes it's too much when they hit the force when they hit the, they're gonna hit a brick wall against these stag defenses not having enough hp to survive them and once again, Hydraulics and Magical hold the line. Another set of Ostrichs just to finish everything off. Yeah, getting a few of those, uh, getting one of those shards it can make it a good difference. They're very expensive. But with the economy Hydraulics has, even taking one of his opponent's bases, it's going to be very hard to uh, come back from this uh, deficit so far. Uh, Sand and Flicky, unfortunately, it's it's just the constant attrition. It's the constant like, draining their forces health, and then from there, they don't have a whole lot of places to heal from. That's been the problem. And now here comes here come the their strikes capitalizing on that weakness. Yeah, I know, but I'm sorry. They're coming down. The units come in. Magico set up as those behemoths. The Ostrichs are going to be cast, but there's not much energy left on those units. But that doesn't matter too much at this point. As Magico just has some units, the Ak looks at the back. The behemoths coming as well. Team Fire is doing their best, but all they have left are some spellcasters, and they're not known for their front lining that potential to get taken out one by one. As Santa and Flicky are slowly losing all the ingredients, and fortunately, there the pizza has not been delivered. Nope, it is it is gonna stay at the restaurant forever. Untouched. Unloved by unloved by the world. She's like, we'll head up to the next part of the bracket as it we'll we'll stick with the pizza delivery squad as they'll be facing off against a pigeon zoo in the lower bracket. That's right. Just a matchup we haven't seen yet. Seen a, a bit of pigeon zoo against magical hydraulics earlier. And uh, magical hydraulics showing their potential. Only dropping one map so far. Yeah, because that was it. That was the only time. That that one cheese in Lost Province is the only loss that Magical Hydraulics have had so far. And what a loss. <laughs> what a game. <laughs> yeah, it was...
Sheesh. Impossible to predict. Yeah, if you want to know how cheese works in this game, watch Santa. Yeah. Hope Santa does a stream and just watch everything he does. <laughs> it's like, it can work really well and it can take a long time. Take a lot longer than you think. Yeah. But when it works, oh boy, does it work. <laughs> and it's like Magical and, and uh, Hydraulic is going to stay, going to be watching their opponents if they can. So we wait for our players to come in and get ready to fight the next round, the lower bracket finals. Okay, apparently you could all hear me talking to my cat. He was yeah. wanting water from the sink. Yeah, that's just Andre, right? Oh, yeah, the sink yeah. with the sink water. I've seen that before. Cats yeah, just love that. Yeah. I mean, I get it. Running water is more fun. I want to have fun. What he has, he has a bowl that has a fountain in it. Oh, yeah. We have that for a cat, too. And the cat only drinks out of that. Also, it's the only water we really give him. So I'm just happy he doesn't oh, drink I've, out of the toilet bowl. He has bowl. another bowl, too. He no. doesn't, he's never even thought to drink out of the toilet bowl. You know, the cats are smart. So we have a lot of plants. He's not so big always... enough to drink out of the toilet. Like he's he's a big for a cat, but I mean, how he's gonna try to get in? It's gonna just drop in, and it's gonna be See, wet. We're, we're always worried that he's gonna eat our plants because apparently they're toxic. The cat just kind of just smells stuff, and if he doesn't like it, he'll he'll move away. It's like okay, thank God. Yeah, that's true. Same for, for everything. Part. Good thing because we'd be scared. It's like no, don't eat that. It's not good for you. It's like, but I like eating stuff. It's like oh yes, you're not a dog. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I mean if the if the cat likes the if it's a good plant, if it's like cat grass or something, they will oh, go yeah. for it. They will absolutely go for it. Vicky's Bay. Right. And okay, this is only a best of one. So. That's right. It is. Thank you for reminding me. And also, like, sorry, oh yeah, just, just, for, uh, just, for, for, just for people watching, uh, whoever knows, it's going to be a best of one. So whoever wins this, it goes to the grand finals against Magical Hydraulics. Magical Hydraulics start yeah. off with a one zero on the best of five. Yeah, so it's going to be basically Magical Hydraulics have to win two games while Pizza Delivery Squad has to. Or oh, sorry, <laughs> the winner of this. Which actually might not be Pizza Delivery Squad, will have to win three. Why just now Pizza do have a chance? They've made their way from the lower bracket. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just don't mean to bias it as the commentator. It's Caster's. Either it'd be Caster's curse or Caster's bias. I'm lost either way. Hey, that, that, that's, that's, mm. the, that's the thing about being a public face. You're going to lose either way. You're just going to do your that's best. That's true. Hopefully, be right sometimes. Other times, you're just going to be wrong. And sometimes, you're going to be right. But even in the right, you'll be wrong. That's just that's commentary just is a no win scenario. <laughs> exactly. Do it because it's fun. As I yeah. stretch, <laughs> that's also very fun. Remember, people, do your, your daily stretches. Stretch your and also hydrate. Well. Oh, yeah, hydrate. Always important. Yeah. And drink out of the fountain. Drink out of the drink out of the water bowl, or drink out of the glass. Anything I mean, works. if you if you can manage a glass, if you have opposable thumbs, I would recommend glasses. If you don't have opposable thumbs, then yeah, find find a good fountain, ideally one with flowing water, or some other kind of source of flowing water that's clean, and then just lick that lick that up. But if you do have a, if you can, if you can with a glass, I'd recommend a glass. Mm. But any cats that are watching, yeah, no, the, the bowl is probably your best bet. So we're here on uh, meme bar uh, meme embargo once more. Getting ready to get no, started. On... As... Oh shoot, it didn't work. No, no, they, they did want the embargo. They did want embargo. Okay, I that I. Right, okay. Everything's good. Pigeon Wrench playing as Mala, YJ's out playing as Zol, and on the other side we have. The other side oh, we have Santa Claus. Squad. Yeah, the Pizza Delivery Squad playing as Mala Zol. So this is a full Aru matchup once more, and yeah, it's gonna be. It's going to be an exciting match, as is there going to be Mazakal? It very might well be from Santa, going for double Efer from the get-go. And Waz Ally is expanding normally, going for a more standard expansion. Other side, yeah, it's just a full-on yeah, mass, 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 mass. This is Mazakal. Yeah, so it sort of does look that way. God, course, I want to see Mazakal versus his... Mass Ikor and see if Santa Claus can make something work. Well, he's definitely not going Mass Ikor this time around, as uh, he went double Efer. Pretty sure that doesn't work out in the in the long run. Just getting those units mm -hmm. up. No. Ah, teapot battle one. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Unfortunate, not mass Icor. Mass Icor really works against those first units, but afterwards, if the Icors are out, well, with micro they can work, but we don't have yeah, the micro. I mean, with micro right. the upgrades, like I'm, that's why I'm really curious. Oh wait, hang on. Never mind. Pigeon wrench. Pigeon wrench wants a taste of that Icor. They want He's some of that cat vomit. Yeah, he's going for a lot of different compositions right now. Going for both Neurosite and the Icors. Okay, I like this. I like the flexibility. Yeah, the mix of Icors can take care of the of the small units, and then there's a cause to tank absolutely everything. 
especially into Zala, it will be going for Mazda calls, so why does that will be very good at dealing with that? Okay, so we have Zakal, Ikor on one side, and we have what may just be Bone Stalker Zakal on the other. Alrighty. Yeah. Whoever can defend best. Of course, like... behind us, Flicky also heading for the expansion, so he'll have the economical lead as Pigeon Run's heading for the expansion, but a bit slower than his Way ally. late. Yeah, that's much. Like, they are going. That's one base Ikor into expansion. Yeah. Behind us is getting a lot of Ether. Which suggests to me that they're planning on going for something more Red Bailey later on. Oh, definitely. Like, they don't have a Neurosite, which means well, they're not going to get a lot of... Oh, I guess... Uh, it, it could yeah. just be delaying his timing a bit to be in sync with his ally. As uh, his ally, he wants to get all the units at the same time as the Zakals come out. And here comes the Zakals from Santa. Yeah, he just has more Zakals than uh, anyone, plus the tower defense. So at this point, yeah, it's going to come down to the towers dishing out a lot of help. Oh. Well, Flicky with the Bone Stalkers and Pitch and Wrench... Taking micro around for that, but man, Flicky is Flicky's playing the smart. Be very careful with the way they set up their bone stalkers. Pitch and Ranch cannot get a shot up on them, and YJ is now able to keep their stuff alive, but not able to do much damage beyond that. And okay, Pitch just... and Ranch keeping going with those Icors. All right, awesome. As he should. Gotta love those Icors. He just got inspired by Santa, and then he's like, "Well, oh, it's gonna work out." I've been well, there. Yeah. Why not? Oh, yeah. I'm still trying to make the spiders work really well. <laughs> spiders are fun, but not today. <laughs> no. They take a little while to get to. It's a, it, I think in 2v2, it is theoretically more possible because you have stuff covering you, but Icors are also fun. Icors are great. Everyone wants to see those little animations, those little cats jumping around all over the place. Uh, Drop yeah, so soul. This... YJ's out. Their favorite unit in the entire game. Yeah, he, he, he the makes more than anyone else. <laughs> They really do. <laughs> Pigeon wrench. All right. Oh, Red Harvest support comes out well. on top, too. If they really want yeah. to take this fight as... Well, the opponent said, oh, Red Harvest, I'll just run away. There's yeah. no point in really fighting this. Why just now coming around to deal with the turret? Possibly a little late, as the Red Harvest will expire, giving team Pizza Delivery Squad room to get back in. Flicky with their own oh, Zol Summon. And the tower does go down. But at oh, great at cost. What cost. My god, that's not the cost you want to pay. You lost almost all your calls. At this point, Santa has the army for the counterattack. Just a lot of Vicor's door. And they have the speed upgrade. It's just on top of now they got to deal with Red Harvest going back their way. And they don't have a lot to deal with these Akal quickly enough to stop them from taking out the tower. No towers for anybody in the center of the map. That's how this game plays. You play Aru, you don't get a tower. Unless well, you can take your opponent's tower. Yeah, at this time, Santa's content to keep pushing forward with only I-Cores in the way. Ah, Zakal's deal with them decently well. At least Especially in these numbers. Breaks. It's not even a matter of, like, Zakal versus Zakal. It's just the numbers. The yeah. cost-effectiveness of the like of it is almost irrelevant when it's this, this much of a disparity. But why does those reinforcements do come in, and that does give Santa pause. Oh, man. Yeah, the, fr the fronts are great, but the fronts won't work much against... There's already some bone stalkers coming in. It was a great idea, though. Just getting out against all those icors of calls. Yeah, there's no anti air. Oh yeah, no, it's it's like I'm surprised we haven't actually seen more air units used to deal with like more wardens, more thrums. Like honestly, I'm kind of shocked this hasn't come up more often. Like yeah, it's not the most damage, and against the call, they it's a pea shooter, but it's still that little bit of extra pressure. Yeah, forcing it, them to it just can make a difference. Think it through. Maybe yeah. forcing them to think it through. What do I want to do next? Okay, trying to get out again. Pigeon Wrench getting a full surround. Just going for reinforcements instead. As White Wait, is going for the front lines. Pigeon as the fronts are just going. This... Okay, Pigeon Wrench. They are oh, out man. for... They're hunting something. Yeah, the hunt won't look... Uh, doesn't look very nice. Oh, are they the going Trumps... for a run-by into the main base? Uh, they were trying. Or just burning sure for how... scouting. Well, either way, the most they're going to get is information because they are not able to get any damage and they've lost half the right cores. Don't worry, it'll be more than half, I'm sure. <laughs> As the frubs just that's... keep following them. <laughs> yes, that's one way of using the phrase, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, he's already dead. He's not dead, he just lost his, his eye cores. Little <laughs> vomit cats. Yeah. Doing their best. Doing their best to come back home and... Well, coming back home goes by the eye... Goes by the... The calls and 
<laughs> oh, those poor cats. Those poor kitties. I was wrong. Yep. They actually survived. Do they? Just try his best. Mm, uh, there, there's two left. Well, that that's better than I expected. Can't, can't call it. Yep, they they two of them got away. Of course, that doesn't mean that Raichu is out. Is basically on their own. Uh, well, there's a lot of Eve on Pigeon Wrench's side. Is there Eve or something that what can make a difference? Do it? Okay, well, getting a lot of the calls themselves. I was wondering, like, are they going to go for Red Veils? Are they going, like, got a lot of Ether. If they want to go for Spellcasters, heck, if they wanted to go for Spiders, they wanted to go for Incubators, those are Ether heavy units. You could absolutely sure. start building up a ton of Ikors. Oh, sorry, Ikors. Yeah, a ton of Incubators alongside what you have now, if you want to build Soul Founders for them. So, I don't know that's a good idea at this stage in the game. I don't expect it is, but you now you got a lot of ether and there's little the, tech units got an option, red veil is an option, air units. I think behemoths pretty ether heavy, so a little hard to get that set up right now to all the thrums, of course. But hey, two base behemoth. I, I I'm I'm down for that. I'd love that. <laughs> Or the proxy behemoths we used to have from time to time. Oh, there's the red veil. Okay, there we go. That's that's going to be the way to spend ether, which has been the typical way of doing it. Set up dread sisters, and for good reason. Yep. Like well, they're great at splitting up armies, split great at setting up kittle cascades. Yeah, it's all those final years that deal with it pretty well. Oh man, yeah. those from that has been the main like dislodger, and to some extent zone control for Aru in this current patch. Yeah, has very been much dread sisters control. and red seers. Yeah, Very like the root, control. the root is the most esoteric and yet surprisingly useful form of zone control we've had. Okay, why is our pigeon wrench coming out? Possibly a little bit too soon. Little like potent. Oh, risking that ramp, able to hold on to it, getting a reasonably good concave too. Santa Claus retreating a bit. Flicky pulling back, trying to bait ever, trying to bait why is our pigeon wrench into a more vulnerable position. Thrums going around the side, picking off units here and there, but oh, Santa Claus. Is over. But Harvest is over. Santa Claus now can get the the push in. Flicky with the surround on Zol. Getting their own concave. Working out across the rocks. White has own Pigeon Wrench. Not able to hold this. Forced back up the ramp with half their army they started with. Yeah, and Santa still has the full the full contingent ready to defend this. And how does he want yeah, to Yeah, they got the this? reserves. Uh, he doesn't need to end it as... Nope. Pigeons who throws. Why that is it. As well. Pigeons and Wise Zhao have gotten third place in this week's tournament as Pizza Delivery Squad moves on to the grand finals to run it back against Magical and Hydraulics. Mm. Yeah, so we're up to the grand finals. I mean, it's, it's always like, what are you going to do? You, both of you, okay. both Magical and Santa Claus, they have... They are both well known for cheese. Magical has been a lot less cheesy for a while, but Santa Claus has been well known for cheese. What's that? Okay. Santa Claus has been well known for cheese. <laughs> yeah, no, he has. <laughs> he he loves his cheese. He loves doing different things, and yeah. Yeah. So I'm. I mean, we've seen a lot of it, and <laughs> we're wait. Did they want Fool's Bay? Didn't actually ask. I just started the game. Well, it's fine. I'm sure everything is. <laughs> and we'll get on with the first game and we'll see what happens afterwards as the next pizza is ready to get delivered as uh, the pizza delivery squad yeah. we're quite happy it's like nope someone placed another order that pizza's not waiting on the counter forever it's going somewhere mm, indeed and here we get started on fool's bay yeah fool's bay with a uh, magical well, we actually have the repeat of last time we had this map. Uh, a lot of, not sure, a full repeat, but at least it's all Aru again. We have Magical and Hydraulics are both going full mallet. They love their Kedos. They're going to get a lot of Kedos coming up. I replied, Santa loves his spiders. We're hoping for some Santas to come, for some spiders to come up, but we don't know yet. And mm -hmm. Flicky sticking with his Zoe. Taking with as Flicky has been changing up and down as well. Yeah, Flicky is. Usually Orzum or Zol. Sorry, not Flicky. I was thinking... Actually, yeah, Flicky has been... I think he's been changing it up a lot, honestly. A little <laughs> it's hard bit. To say yeah, what... I'm trying to remember, actually. Flicky felt like he was more Orzum or Zol before, but yeah, you're right. It's been... This this last series, they've been very flexible. And, 
Yeah, so Flicky decided not to take the base at the back. Well, Flicky and Santa both taking the forward bases, keeping the base at the back, hidden until later use whenever they want to get to it. A strategy I I can see the logic in. It's a bit risky, but if it pays off, you have a very strong end game. Since exactly. you have this entire base, your opponent can't assault. If you're like the first five bases are pretty hard to attack. And often in this map in particular, we'll often end up with other bases getting attacked first. Although, uh, yes. You know, There's not a lot of other bases, to be honest. No. There's like yeah, a couple alloy good. only in the front, and then those little alcove bases. Yeah, it get a bit harder to... Uh, this one gets pretty hard to defend. The center one is very hard to defend. There's a lot of choke points, so that helps. Mm -hmm. You can put a lot of static defense. At the same time, it's just there, right in the middle, between two towers. The two towers ready to... <laughs> Yeah, there's always reinforcements, always healing. They are available. Hmm. Oh, the little teapot survived. Good job, Flicky. Keeping your hopes alive. The tower. Oh, the scouts. Yep. No, oh. Santa's not going to be able to get Three too on much. Two. Oh, two, four on two. Hmm. Yeah, he can heal up. He's fine. Just got to enjoy the healing up at the towers. So, good. And now Magical Hydraulics... Okay, so Magical doesn't seem to be going too hard into anything but Bone Stalkers. Or, sorry, Mass Hunters. Pure Mass Hunter. Just fine. So yeah, much but... Scout Death. Cannot, oh, yeah, so... cannot let them steal fire. It's pretty good to just head up in those type of... of te oh, wow. Already a God Heart coming out for Hydraulics. Not for Magical. It's really interesting going for those uh, early type of tech things. That Going for Mass Hunters, that just means you have so much effort to go into something else. Mm -hmm. The biggest issue of going that many Zakals is, well, it uses up all your efforts, you'll be slower in getting everything else. But you also survive everything else, and oh, Santa canceled his natural, I just realized that, wow. Oh, they did the thing. <laughs> the spicy Wait, thing. Wait, they both <laughs> did. They both canceled their naturals. Oh, this, this is, is spicy. This is Zakal push, baiting out expansions, making their opponents think they're safe. Okay, so their opponents think they're safe, and let's see how that happens. Are they safe enough to defend this? Hydraulics coming in. I mean, they've got a reasonably... Oh, else. they would have had a reasonably good shot, but now Team Fire is in the high... Pizza Delivery Squad is already on the high ground. Magical well, no, is better not from able the to join ground. up. Uh, no, in fact. I've, I actually was not familiar with this fact. I Thank you for educating me. Of course. <laughs> the fight's going on. Oh, yeah, they're just, they're just running to the other high ground one way after the other. Oh, getting... Yeah, get, getting a production structure on top of it. That's already producing some units. Some units are not going to be made. Red Harvest comes down on both sides. Keto's coming out from every dead unit everywhere. Flicky dropping Zol. Able to get around the side with that. No second Red Harvest, though. And the, the other hand, Santa's embiggening their units already. Making them that much harder to push through. And while Hydraulics followed by Magic, Magical's dropping another one, but just too many units. They don't care about the Kittle. The Caller's just kind of there to tank everything. They'll live long enough, it's no problem. The last piece of call for Hydraulics are embiggened, and it is giving Santa Claus and Flicky reason to retreat. Mike ring around, trying to be very careful, pull back, but it's actually, Hydraulics able to do a lot more. Really, those are called punching above their weight. At the, the Red Harvest really actually made a huge difference in that last fight. Getting that second Red Harvest while the first one expired just means they had Ketos the whole time. Well, uh, the pizza delivery squad only had it in the initial fight, and then they're on a retreat. Now all those calls are coming in from uh, from Team Ice, and unfortunately, this cheese was not cooked enough in this pizza. Mm, uh, that's always the worst. I know, right? Uncooked pizza? Uncooked cheese? Oh, man. We want the best cheese. We want the cooked cheese, the crunchy cheese. But this cheese is just getting surrounded. Well, it's plenty crunchy when it's uncooked, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, man. Flicky able to get us around, though, as Hydraulics and Magical overextend slightly. Santa and Flicky get them back to the tower. Beyond that, it's going to be a challenge. And Santa and Flicky have not yet gone to stabilize. They're continuing with reinforcing this push. Trying to keep pulling Hydraulics and Magical out of the safe spots. Trying to keep baiting the unit from the small groups. That tower is actually reasonably almost okay. dead. It they, they were, is. they were getting a nice arc. They were getting a nice arc on that fight. That's what they really need to get this fight going. Top fit. Oh, okay, I was gonna say Santa has fire while your opponents don't, but Magical also has fire. So even there's red harvest, it will be a red harvest equilibrium. And Teapot heading in, seeing that there's absolutely no expansion, and quite happy to see that. I was like, oh, okay, you just killed one of my production buildings. That's it. I have more. I have economy. I have a god heart. 
Yeah. Now hydraulics in a really good spot if they if they maintain this. Magical is okay as well, but like they're team ice. They can hold this off. Like they're gonna be fine in like three or four minutes. They just keep can going. They hold off? Okay, here's the Red Harvest. Yeah, good question. Red. Can they hold off? Red Harvest coming from Santa Claus, pushing Hydraulics back to the tower, but Santa's army is just that much smaller. Most of those kids came from Santa's own dead Zukal. As a power, at least, at least even your own dead gets a cause, get you a bit of cannon fodder. As uh, Magical coming up from the back, wants to get the flank on, Santa Claus treats just in time to his own tower. Is it going to be enough? Him. With this many Zakal from Team Ice, it's not enough to hold Santa, knows it moves back. Tries to embiggen when they can, but only gets so many. Losing the tower in the process as Hydraulics continues the pressure. Flicky with the attempt to save the day. That has been their job this far. Yeah, Got the flank. Full flank. Trying oh, to get Hydraulics caught here. out. Ooh, they do have a great art. Magical is oh. getting caught very thoroughly. Hydraulics can't move harvest. back much either. The Red Magical. Harvest forces Flicky to, to abstain from this fight. He needs to run Oof. back. There's no way it's not worth fighting at that point. Does split up Magical's force, though. Hydraulics and Santa is a bit of an even, more even fight for Santa. But then with the Red Harvest from Hydraulics, it makes it that much harder. Again, Magical. Sorry. Again, Magical Hydraulics continuing the pressure. Santa Claus cannot hold. Flicky's doing okay, though. He has the, his own zone fine. summoned. Yeah, yeah. As soon as you have your own Immortal spell, the other team has no choice but to retreat. Uh, but really, they don't care if they have to retreat. They already killed their bases. Yeah. Flicky has an extra it's base, a, but finally has natural, but that's not win. much. Yeah, Hydraulics and Magical. I think Magical yeah, Magical's expanded once again. So Magical's up three bases. Against two one base opponents. Well, Flicky expanding in the back. Flicky coming in to try to clean up some of the straggler forces. Getting rid of Magical's rear guard, but that just buys Hydraulics more time. And that's it. Pizza Delivers Squad throws in for the first match. Or Santa Claus, at least. Flicky. Flicky a bit more confident. They can keep going. It's he not over a, yet. He has a bit more army. At least he has that. Yeah. But he has a bit more is not enough as is not as good as having twice as much of your opponents that are coming in from both sides. As they call just jumping on top of everything. And uh Oh man. It's Red Harvest to finish it off. There it is. That is the GG. And Magical Hydraulics take game one. Yeah, so they're up 2 0. Well, they're one victory away from winning this. Pizza Lover Squad still need three wins to uh, take it away. We'll see what mm -hmm. map they choose to go for next and what strategy they can go for. It's really the other thing, right? What strategy they. Uh, maps really depend on the strategy. Fool's Bay is one of the better maps to do this a call push exactly like that. Just because you're, you're for, you force your opponent out of position. Yeah. And then it's, it's just good about. It's a good call push, but it also was a good for the call push. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. Well, Lost Province coming up. The one map that they have won so far. Are they going to retry the cheese and see if they can win outright with it? I mean, is there... worst that could happen is you lose the tournament. Yeah, that's happened before, right? Losing tournament off of trying to cheese your way out. But they're pizza deliveries, deliverers. They love their cheese. Okay. What will they decide for one last time? The one... Last battle. Not like last time. There's, the, oh, they true. might win. They might the win. Last, the last, the last lower, lower bracket. The potential last battle on the possibly that yes. has already been the, lost. It's match point, is what we're trying to match, say. Yes, match point. <laughs> That's the term. Sports. It's actually, tournament we're point for magical and hydraulics. So, what is going to be the thing here? We'll find out because tournament point, the, and they might try anything. They hmm. might try a full-on symbiote rush. Oh, the dream. The dream yeah. of the symbiote rush is alive and well. And so far, not quite. I say as, uh, well, they I went mean, for different factions this time around. You're right, they did. They're Double now origin. playing Krath, which is which has a much easier time pulling off the build they did last time. Yeah, you don't have to They're get not... the power first. But exactly, you, you don't well. have to wait. Oh, they gotta be careful. Flicky double-checking does see the scout. Santa, Santa, Santa or Flicky rather... <laughs> get out of there oh wow that was so close to being spotted and he might he might have been out he might have been out might have been spotted i'm actually not entirely sure and now if they go the to, thing oh, is... they're gonna get, no they're gonna get spotted they're gonna get spotted so the, the tower is right there they're gonna get spotted they've been spotted like no they know <laughs> magical hydraulics no the tower has enough oh, vision man. range well that's gonna put it that's not gonna last things. long i'm sorry it's gonna you put tried a great idea 
Bad, bad path choice. Yeah, see, it's even nicer because they decided to go in a different spawn than last time. Makes yeah, it even more interesting. Honestly, that's a great idea. Like, go to a different spot your opponent doesn't expect, set up. It's just, unfortunately, they went, they didn't go around through the pyre miner and instead went through the center. Yeah, and Which now Magic is like, yeah. yeah. You can just stay on one base at this point. You stay on one base, you get your. Uh... No, they're doing the same thing. Like, get one base, three production structures each. Yep. Hydraulics is going for expansion because they are they like to play like to play with fire. But to know. be fair, with, with the reinforcements coming just slightly quicker, than, they're going to be fine. Especially that you know, okay, well, going up the hill won't help that much because as soon as Antari come up, yeah, they're going to be a lot to deal with. Yeah, you can get a few modes at least. They won't come out later. But as soon as Antari come out, you have to run. Uh, but will they get yep. the moat? Will they get the moat? And oh, come on, get the moat. Nope. Okay, run. I don't know if they get the moat. They may not get the moat. They won't get the moat. And they even which lost. is not that's sure. actually even more important because the Zentari are going to need hallowed ground to move forward. So the moats, if they start popping down production structures in their base, like in Magical Hydraulics' base, that's hallowed ground for the Zentari they wouldn't otherwise have. Uh, at this point, using the towers first defense, and then you're going to use the second tower. And unfortunately, we don't have pillars anymore, so you can't just pillar rush forward. Well, we do have them. They're just twice as expensive. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Doing their best to survive this as Zentari rushing forward with their swords. Champ out the thing. Magical just content getting the reinforcements coming from the back, and reinforcement just works so well. All they have to deal with is the units at the front, and with Magical helping Hydraulic survive, so keep his base alive, good micro keeping as many units as he can. There's only six Antares at the front being dealt with. At the back, Magical trying to micro on both fronts. Or at least mm -hmm. pull the units away. Nah, this got this got disrupted. Like it'd be I would be very surprised if Sand and Flick you were able to hold this just because they got spotted. Like they weren't able to build up enough Centauri to make this a critical mass. They weren't able to get presumably a a reliquary for the Magi to then get hallowed ground in their opponent's base. As we're seeing, like, so many mass hunters just able to kite through this and take out the Zentari. Even dropping the tower like that to get the extra hallowed ground. If that doesn't build up, then, well, it's not going to go anywhere. And Red Harvest just to prevent those towers from going up. Yeah, just to, keep, just to killed. push them away. Even killed, so won't get any pyre back at all. Yeah, so instead, the second that cancels can. instead. Let's get his pyre back and put it back later. Ah, uh, yeah, this has got... Completely deflected. It might be able to get a tower, but no. Hydraulics and Magical are on no, the case. they have enough. They, there's way too many forces. Magical and Hydraulics, they are ready. And now Hydraulics with the expansion on top of this, so they've got the economic boost on top of everything else. Take out the nice Zentari surround, when though. they're out of hollow ground. Yeah, those guys surround. Unfortunately for Pizza Delivery Squad, Zentari did not have range at that point. Uh, they don't need range. They can just keep jumping for... Oh, Red Harvest comes down. That's going to be the yep. end this push. When Red Harvest comes down, you run. <laughs> So no rhyme or reason to it. No rhyme or reason. I mean, if run, they can keep run. this going for another five minutes, Santa will be able to drop a pillar. But whether <laughs> they keep this going for another five minutes is a that's a big ask. That's they're they're starting to get their legion halls threatened. It's it's a lot to ask them to keep it alive that long. Well, legion halls can survive, right? Those Centauri are True. just surviving True. based on the they get range in there, so that makes a big difference in surviving this. Oh, and biggins. I mean, that's what that's what you get benefited from that, right? Yeah, that is what you get from the Red Harvest. So for reference, anyone who's not familiar, Red Harvest does give you a resource called Blood, which can then be spent to make units 30% everything better. Also known as Embiggen them. Yeah, yeah mostly bigger. <laughs> Bit of a choke point there. I jumped and through that's, it. Yeah, and which is giving Pizza Delivery Squad a bit more time. But even then, it's, you know, expansions here and there. It's They've added mass Hunters. It's potentially tech. Got Neurosafe. Right. They could go for Offering. Oh, they're definitely going for Offering just to finish this off. At this point, it's how do we finish them off? Often the answer yeah. is just run to their own bases and kill their workers and annoy them to heck. While Magical's everything. doing exactly that. Yep, Magical's yeah. going and set up a bit of a run-by. Hydraulics does. making sure to keep an eye on the Pyre count. And Magical's other force is just making sure that nothing goes for a counterattack into the Team Ice main base. Okay, Which they know it is going to go for. This is the thing that Sand and Flicky wanted originally. They managed to buy enough time to get that critical mass of Zentari. And they have the pillar. And they have the pillar. Are Magical and Hydraulics going to be able to hold this off? 
before it becomes pillar. And where do you put down the pillar? Yeah, directly in the main, right? You don't yeah. want to put it in... And they have more natural. proxy construction. Hydraulics and Magical split up, but able to hold each line independently. We'll be able to regroup off the flank. Flicky losing a lot of their force in the process. Santa Claus dropping the pillar, but doesn't have a whole lot to hold with it. Last few Zentari go down in a hurry as Magical and Hydraulics get their reinforcements in. Santa and Flicky trying their best to hold on. And Byron broke the pillar to get that extra bit of damage. But even with that, the pillar is going to go down while the bases fall. Flicky and Santa Claus realize that's it. And that is the tournament. Break the game weekly. Alpha edition number 31 ends with a victory for Magical and Hydraulics against Santa and Flicky. And yeah, that is game. Pizza Delivery Squad made it all the way to finals. Only if you get intercepted by Hydraulics and Magical. Who don't even mm -hmm. need a team name. They're just uh, going to roll with uh, their own names. And Hydraulics and Magical. Dirty. Hydraulics Magical. Or Thank Magical Hydraulics. Know. Congratulations to Magical Hydraulics for taking the tournament win and to Pizza Delivery Squad for second place. And also, like, again, thank you all of you for signing up. This was a really good tournament, like really good turnout. I mean, we had a bit of technical problems early on, but after we sorted that out, after we unplugged Flicky's mic, then or after Flicky unplugged their mic, it all worked out. So from that point on, yeah, been a great tournament and really glad that everyone just came out and showed up, like really, yeah. really played, played interesting strategies, really gave their all i'm very i'm always happy to see people trying stuff and really committing to seeing what they can do to find what might be broken in the game yeah we even Especially had for a new when, player we even, we had even a had new a new player. player we did have a, a new Muzetu? player i'm not sure how to pronounce this but mood so very Muzetu, happy i'm guessing yep. they weren't able to take a game this tournament that's okay i'm sure they'll, they'll do better the following one so th yeah. thank you for playing for joining us in our weeklies yeah i'm always I, that's the biggest thing is new players new players are great other than that thank you to Simus for handling the organization of the tournament because that's what they that's the thing they do part of their <laughs> being the esports manager and thank you to zk thank you to thank you for helping co-commentate yeah as, always a pleasure. Oh, i'm glad to hear it otherwise thank you all of you for watching and these tournaments run every week, so don't forget to stay tuned. Sorry, don't forget to tune in every week and sign up for the next one. We won't be one. Again, thanks for watching and have a good night, everyone.